preach to the choir of the United States of America and to the power of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the April 22nd Selectman's Meeting. Um, so our first thing tonight is appointment of Anthony Scriber to full-time officer position. Mr. Chairman, thank you again on behalf of the Police Department. We thank the board for allowing us to do this in your busy agenda. We will be quick with it and we'll move afterwards upstairs uh, so you can continue your very busy agenda. So at this point, I've asked Officer Schreiber to take uh, post right there. And our town clerk, Shirley Doheny, to administer the oath of office. From the town of Hampton County of Rockingham to Anthony F. Schreiber of Chester, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of full time police officer in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office. We do hereby appoint you the said Anthony F. Schreiber as full-time police officer <coughs> of said town. And upon your taking oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of the oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be su subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand and seal, this 22nd day of April, Fred Welch, town manager. Now, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Anthony F. Schreiber. I, Anthony F. Schreiber. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me. As the full-time police officer. As the full-time police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Next on the agenda, we have the ESGR Award to Deputy, Deputy Chief Hobbs. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Walzak. I'm the Region 1 Seacoast Chair for the Employer Support for the Garden Reserve. And uh, Mr. Chairman and the Select Board, thank you as well as the Chief did for giving us this time here tonight. We're here tonight to, to honor David Hobbs, and he was uh, nominated uh, by uh, one of the people that worked for him 
uh, Alex, who's here tonight. Alex, uh, that's how these awards work. We uh, we we get nominations from from guardsmen and guardsmen and reservists who believe that their employers are just going the extra mile here to help them in completion of their military duties. So, uh, ESGR does a number of things. We educate. We try to help. Uh, mediate between employers and their uh, their guardsmen and reservist employees, um, but the happiest part of our job is to provide awards. And tonight we really are uh, pleased. Um, I know David, and I'm, so I'm really pleased tonight to be able to present what we call a Patriot Award. And the best way to describe it is to just simply read off what it says. This comes from the Office of the Secretary of Defense. It's called Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve recognizes David Hobbs, Hampton Police Department, as a patriotic employer for contributing to national security and protecting liberty and freedom by supporting employee participation in America's National Guard and Reserve Force. I think that says it all. David? Thank you. Congratulations. So right now we should have just the people that are here uh, for what's on the agenda. So if someone could close that door if it's possible. I don't think it is. Well, it probably isn't. <laughs> Doesn't look it. No. Okay. We have uh, Mr. Welch will be having an announcement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've been doing some research on this uh, trash issue, and. Uh, one of our members uh, emailed in to me a uh, warrant article that was passed by the town meeting on uh, the 2011 annual town meeting ballot under Article 8. Okay, we're going to just have to wait until the people leave then, if that's the case. I'll go up there. Well, you probably want to leave the door open for the ventilation. <laughs> Don't trip over the cord. Just be, be careful. They can hear him. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Start over again. Uh, we have been searching for answers to the issue of uh, picking up trash and, and but looking at town reports and looking at uh, different items that uh, the town has in its record base. And uh, this was not entered into the town code, but should have been. And it would have saved probably all of us a lot of trouble. Uh, Article 8 that was passed at the 2011 annual town meeting specifically says, this is at the time we purchased the carts, we purchased the trucks, we purchased some other things. Yeah. Okay, there were two important things that were done at that town meeting. Number one, uh, they purchased 9,895 gallon carts uh, for refuse and wheeled containers for refuse and recycling for distribution to single and two family residential locations currently receiving refuse and recycling collection. So if you live in a condex, you're going to get your trash collected because that's what the town meeting voted. Okay, the other thing they voted so that people understand this one a little further than that. Uh, it says, quote, this was an amendment uh, by Mr. Rage. I don't know if he's here or not. Uh, but he amended the uh, article which passed um, to allow commercial locations to purchase recycling and refuse containers at the town's rate. That means that commercial locations that have purchased them will get their trash collected because they have a cart. Uh, this doesn't apply to condexes that are, we have a few condexes in town that are uh, uh, situations where you have 10 or 12 or 15 condexes in a single condominium. 
That doesn't pertain to them. This is just the Condexes, two family residences. Condex, by the way, is a New Hampshire term for a condominium of just two parties. So if you're a condominium and you have just you and your neighbor and you have your condominium documents, your trash is going to get collected, just like single family residences. Everybody that's got a single family residence that's got a cart, your trash and recycling is going to be collected. If you are a commercial resident, a commercial business, and you have purchased your carts, your trash is going to get collected. If there's any mix up in that, either call the town manager's office, my office, and we'll start sending out notices tomorrow to anybody that should not have received a notice telling them that the cancellation is it, that you're you're going to get your trash collected. I want to tell people that before we get started. We are here tonight to talk about only condos, not commercial trash. So if you're here to talk about commercial trash, tonight is not the night. Rick, I have one question. I know there's someone, in, and I spoke with the town manager this morning about it, Fred, uh, 725 Lafayette Road is technically a condo, but they have, it's a commercial business, so they get their trash picked up every day. If the condominium is a commercial condominium, we do not pick up commercial condominiums. If it's a residential establishment within a commercial condominium, we pick up the residential trash from that residential business, or residence, not business. So regardless of how many units there are, it's all residential? Then no. Oh, no. Fine. No. Sorry. No. It, 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 Thank you. It does matter how many units are in the complex, right. okay? A condex is, is a standalone condominium of two parties. Okay. Yeah, you're side by side. Mm -hmm. I live in one, so I, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we share with, I share with my neighbor, he shares sure. with me. Yeah. We, we maintain mm -hmm. the building ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not part of a larger condominium. Uh, there are several in town that have five or 10 or 15. I'm in one with eight. You're in one with and eight, so you, your trash would not be collected. But it's because always that's, that's a condominium. Yeah, we will have the discussion later. Fred is just trying to give people a break that don't that might not want to be here if you have one or two units. So if you have one or two units, you don't have to stay. You're welcome to stay. If you are commercial trash, we are not talking about commercial trash tonight. We did that last week. So uh, did you have something else no, to say? No, Mr. Fred? Chairman, that's all you need to say. So Mr. We're, Chairman, yeah. Can we move them to the front of the meeting? Who? Right, all these people. All these people, so that we're dealing with yes. it at yeah. the beginning yeah, of the no, meeting. Yeah, no, 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 we are going to do here. that. We are okay. going to do it. Um, so uh, anyone that wants to clear out, feel free. Other people, take a seat if there's something available. And <clears throat> we um, are going to... Item 10-2. Wait a minute, where is it? 10-2. This is the bottom of the second page. Okay. Um, we are bringing to the top of the agenda the residential condominium solid waste discussion. And if anybody would like to uh, speak, we're going to uh, have a, anyone feel free to speak. We're going to ask that you speak two minutes or less because of the size of the crowd. So anyone that wants to speak has two minutes to talk. Join us at the podium and tell us your name and address. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Mark Longstaff. I'm the president of the Ocean Spray Condominium Association. Yep. Our address is 407 Ocean Boulevard in Hampton, New Hampshire. Our building contains 22 single family condominium units. It was built in 1982. For over 25 years, the town has picked up our trash and we are grandfathered into this service. Uh, this is per New Hampshire law, RSA 674.39. In fact, for the last 25 years, Hampton has set a precedent by picking up our trash weekly. We believe we pay for our trash pickup through our property taxes and is the case for most, as is the case for most taxpayers in Hampton. We sit on a small plot of land that could support one or two single family homes with an expected tax revenue of $15,000. Our 22 unit uh, condo pays $110,000 in property taxes. Last week we heard from the business owners that his 15 business properties combined paid $110,000. Clearly condominiums are paying, paying their fair share of taxes, a highly e efficient use of land with a large tax contribution. We have a total of 11 barrels, six trash, five recycle, shared by 22 units. The same number of single family homes would have 44 barrels. 
businesses have up to 40, 40 barrels each, and they get seven days a week pickup. We get two days a week. Um, none of our unit owners have any children in the Hampton uh, <coughs> school system. Yeah. We pay our fair share of our uh, burden. Uh, our, we pay our fair share of taxes. Our burden on the Hampton infrastructure is minimal, and we want to be treated fairly. We want to be part of the solution, but we don't want to be the solution. I attended last week's business owner trash meeting. We share the same concerns. Article 43 was voted down by 84% of the voters. In our estimation, that is still in place here. Tax abatement would be on the table if trash pickup was discontinued. It would be unfair for a single group, business or condominium owners, to bear the brunt of the DPW budget issue. Less trash pickups will negatively affect the beach. A magnitude of, or a multitude of private contracting trucks rolling around the beach in the summer will just add to the confusion. Um, the DPW trucks will still be rolling. They'll just be hopscotching all over the beach. It was uh, decided to form a working group to make a recommendation on condom uh, and condominium unit, uh, unit owners want to be in part of that working group as well. We want to find an equitable solution that's fair for everyone. The final outcome of last week's meeting was not to make any knee-jerk decisions. As single-family condominium owners, we ask the same decision be reached tonight. We request that our trash pickup continues until a well-thought-out, fair solution that applies to all taxpayers is reached. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to speak, sir? Did you want to speak, Frank? Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Good, for the record. Oh, okay, thank you. We have our next speaker at the podium. Please, your name, your name. Terry Dolan, I'm here representing the Greenbrier condominiums. Um, there are 24 units there. The trash has been picked up for 39 years, since 1982. Please, no talking. I'm gonna speak to the laws that protect condominium owners from things like this. RSA 356B is the Condominium Act, and B4 states that each condominium unit shall constitute for all purposes a separate parcel of real property, distinct from all other condominium units. We are no different than any other residential homeowner and that for now is going to continue to receive trash collection. RSA 356B5 goes on to say that no condominium shall be treated differently by any zoning or land use ordinance which would permit a physically identical, identical project or development under a different form of ownership. Again, you can't single out condominiums. And the recorded site plan 676-3 is an RSA that protects us from being subject to an ordinance which was later passed after our site plan, which was recorded in 1982, had already been approved by the town. Discrimination. Under the Fair Housing Act, prohibited activities include providing different levels of service to different classes. That is, residents in single-family homes have the benefit of trash collection while denying that, say, that same service to residents in condominiums. The town of Hampton intends to continue residential trash collection to other residential homeowners, hotels, motels, businesses, and restaurants. Only condominiums are being singled out to have this service taken away. And as Mark mentioned, we have um, we do have a, a condominium group, and if anyone would, is interested in joining along with us, they should see us after the meeting. We don't intend to just sit back and let and be taken advantage of. Thank you. Yes, I, I want the location. We are, I want the location. I heard the location. I will tell you, Mrs. Wolseley. What location? Mr. Hi. Yes, it's uh, Ray Blondo, 15 Island Path, Rosewood Condominiums. Yeah. Um, That's good. I just want to say that uh, I like the job that the town does, and I hope that something can be worked out where the trash collection can be continued to be picked up. Um, our situation is a little unique where the trucks have grown big. It's going to be hard to get a truck in and out of there. There's a lot of different stories, but I want it to be fair to everybody. I agree with everybody has to say. I don't want anyone paying my bills, and I don't want to pay <laughs> theirs. So you guys have a challenge ahead of you. I like the job you do. I said it last time. I want to repeat that. The town does a good job, 
It's that symphony, that, that whole coordination effect that's very important and vital to doing the job correctly. Um, as they said, it's very important. <clears throat> and this is really more about making sure you preserve the whole beach while you take care of the trash. Right. All right, and that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, who would like to speak? Hi, I'm uh, Jeanette Carroll, and I'm from 22K Street, which is the Beach Haven Condo Association. Our unit is made up of eight residential, no commercial. There are no children in the building in the school district, but even if there was, we, we pay taxes. I'm not gonna recite laws or anything, it's just I'm a simple, don't like to make things complicated. I pay my taxes, I want what's included, and that's as much as anybody can say. You know, we pay a higher rate at the beach, and that's fine because of our address. But to take away something that we're already paying for, there's got to be a different solution. And I just, I just hope we take a lot of different suggestions into consideration tonight. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> and who would like to speak? I'm Tom Quinlan, 19 Dumas Avenue. The break is at Boar's Head. Can we do this? Yeah, so okay. people want to hear you. <laughs> Usually that's not the, my problem. <laughs> uh, I'm the break is at Boar's Head. And uh, I'm one of the thousand, I believe, letters that went out. I guess it was a thousand, a little over a thousand letters that went out. And uh, the letter didn't state much. I guess the problem is one of budget. You're gonna save a lot of money by having a thousand of these letters to go out and uh, we're not gonna have uh, the barrels or the containers anymore. So I guess the town is gonna to have about 4,000 or so barrels or containers that I guess you're gonna store them somewhere. Free storage out here in Hampton Beach somewhere? I don't know where you're going to store them. They're pretty well contaminated at this point. And so when you come by with your trucks, they'll go to the, my next door neighbor and they'll pick up three or four uh, containers there and then they'll go right by our place. I, that saves a lot of money, I assume, for the truck because they don't have to have that arm go up and pick up our three containers and they'll go to the next. So they don't save the driver. They're not going to save any gas not going to save any maintenance, not going to put any less mileage on that vehicle. The fellow who's driving it and the fellow who drives with him and everybody else, he's going to stay in the car. He's not going to punch out. He's not going to punch back in to go to the next house. So I'm sure you're going to save some money. I just don't know how. Now, myself and our people in our uh, unit, we're going to get a probably a handyman of some sort because we're all going to have dump permits. Probably he's going to take a container. He's going to take it down to the dump. He's going to empty it. Because a trash container takes up a lot of space. 33 years ago when somebody went to the planning board and they said, here's our plans for our uh, home that sits on the beach. We have a front yard and we have a side yard. and Oh yeah, we have a backyard that goes right out to the ocean. I think we'll put the container out there. Uh, probably a little bit of seepage goes out, a little bit of leaching. Ah, going to go into the ocean. Not going to put it out there. Not today in this day and age. 33 years afterwards. Let's put it in the front yard. Nah, that's a good way to do it for people who drive by the ocean. How about in the side yard? Not so good. <clears throat> so I don't see where we're going to save an awful lot of money by having a thousand of these people have their trucks go by, not stop. Maybe the way to do it, and I sent a letter out to the vice chairman, uh, uh, Madam Bonds, and hopefully maybe you'll take a look at it. What it says is that it's about $4 per container per month. Not an awful lot of money for these 16 or 17,000 containers that are out there. Maybe the way to do it is share the burden, if it's a burden at all, and see what happens. Thank it's you for your container. comments. We appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan Rivera. I'm representing Richmond Suites Condominiums at 89 Ashworth Ave. And I just had uh, a question about something that, you know, you may not have um, considered. There's no questions. Well, I mean, I want you to think of this. Oh, okay, that's okay? fine. We're not having an exchange with people as they speak. There is, um, we have uh, two buildings, two four-unit buildings there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I called all these names of all these uh, 
uh, companies that could pick up trash, and one guy never responded at all. Three said they only do dumpsters, ah. and one will pick up barrels. So, we don't have room for a dumpster. And this was all approved by the town to convert these buildings into condominiums. So we're now restricted to one vendor, and we're at the mercy of that vendor. He can charge us whatever he wants when he feels like it. He can raise the prices now that he knows that he's got a gold mine. Or he may find that he's not making money picking up barrels and decides, I'm not doing barrels anymore, now I'm only doing dumpsters. What do we do? And that's the question for you. Thank you. Good question. And <clears throat> uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Sam Sclafani. I am with uh, 140 Kings Highway, Butternut Hollow Condominiums. And uh, we have eight cottages, separate cottages, single cottages on each side of the street. And I really don't know what the difference is between a duplex and a single, uh, how it affects us. But I have sympathy for all the uh, condominium associations here. Uh, we all pay taxes. Um, and uh, that's a vital service. And the gentleman that just spoke before me, <clears throat> I ran into the same problem. Um, two quotes that I received were so high, and they said that they have to get other business in the area to do it. Another one only did dumpsters. And I was only able to get one good firm quote. Uh, so it's a very tight market and difficult. Mm. So I just hope the uh, selectman board here takes into consideration our uh, problems, all the condominium owners. Thank you. Okay. I need to borrow some glasses here. I forgot mine. Put that down um, just I'll a little bit so we can hear you. Put it down? Put it down a little bit. Okay. So um, I'm not going to recite articles and laws and this and that. I've got a little different angle at it that shows the inequality. <laughs> some like it, some won't. I watched the business meeting last week and uh, discussions were in the works for a year and why we weren't asked during the year about this and have some input is beyond me. But I understand the budget was shot down and cuts are to be made. However, I'm confused about DPW trash cuts. Glass is an issue, and I believe it's not only our community, but every community. I'm thinking more county or state to deal with glass. Something's got to be brought up there in discussions, because it's everybody's problem. We have four units at 406 High Street condos. They're adjacent to High Street. We were converted, <coughs> excuse me, I believe, I think it was 1993 and 92, from apartments to condos. We were never told our trash would not be handled by the town. It's always been until I received this recent mm -hmm. letter. I know the newer larger condo buildings were informed on approval to build that they needed private trash collection mm -hmm. of dumpsters. I mean, I've sat and listened to those meetings. With six adults and one child living in four units in our association, I see one family homes and duplexes with more trash out on trash day than we put out. Everyone recycles, and if the worth of recycling is declining, and this is the reason to cut back, well, you pick up our trash before, and we're still going to have to do it. It's still going to be brought to the same place, the mm -hmm. same cost. Um, what are you saving? Is what someone else said, what are you saving by driving past our barrels and moving on to the next stop? I, it takes maybe three minutes to dump the barrels in the truck. Maybe when one licensed their dog, you could charge a fee to dispose of waste during the year. Or maybe you'd charge the person who doesn't have a compost to dump their food waste in. It's, it's no different than knocking off small condos on main roads from pickup. It's a very tricky thing to change trash collection. Some have more, others have less. You have to share the difference. The town should pick up the trash for the taxpayers. Just like our condo, because we were apartments, we have one water meter for the building. We don't argue who's using more water, who isn't. The water bill comes in, you pay it. That's that. It's nickel and diming. I'm a single parent, resident of Hampton for 34 years, paying taxes for over 25 years, who sent my child to private school for eight years. I didn't question the amount I paid for schools in this town. 
It's all part of the package of living here. The police got their new stations, the fire department got their stations, the new school auditoriums went in, and uh, talking with a lot of people in town, they don't want trash collection changed. It's not asking a lot. Seniors in this town have been trying for years to get a senior center. Now I'm reading of a senior asking for help to get their trash picked up. I think it's sad. Someone in the 80s, it's sad that this town can't handle that. And I'm not gonna say anything, you might not like what I say about police and fire, I think they're great. I think DPW is a group of great employees that do a wonderful job. Who do the cuts seem to always start with? DPW, right away. I'm sure there are other ways to cut the budgets that affects everyone in town, not just a few. Thank you for your I'm comments. I'm talking we police, fire, town hall, everywhere. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Nice to see you. Hi, my name is Don Hayes. I'm president of the San Dollar Condo Association on Church Street. Um, every point that everybody has brought up so far, it, it applies but there was something specific in the letters that came out. There was a copy of our bylaws from 1980 mm -hmm. filed. We no longer have those. We rewrote bylaws last year where we have changed our condo association from being an association of the units and everybody is individually and we're not providing any services. Mm -hmm. So we, we have set it up in our bylaws that it's more as if it's a common driveway with on a common plot of land and each unit is is that in the bylaw so when the letter quotes that our bylaws state it it's it's from an old old set of bylaws <laughs> and other condo associations may have done this they they i believe there was a need to rewrite bylaws for all condo associations re recently i don't know if it's all quoted but that's this is an individual case. I don't know if it applies to more, yeah. but I think it uh, needs to be considered for our association. Um, in addition to everything else I can reiterate, we have called for quotes. Um, most were dumpsters. One didn't call back. We had one that would do barrels. We can't do a dumpster. We have a straight driveway, and there's only one location straight in that would shut off yeah. drive driveways and parking for two units yeah. mm -hmm. so it's a it's a hardship that goes beyond and again if you start getting a monopoly of those the prices will keep going up so we need to have a better way or more list something more uh, more more equitable that for for the rest thank you and we also appreciate it yeah thank you thank you, thank you. Would like to speak next? My name is Jim Nevin. I uh, live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I supply the rubbish removal services for Winnicott High School. Hi, Mr. Welch. I have a very reputable barrel company. Um, if the unthinkable happens, I would be happy to refer you people to uh, the gentleman. I do offer front load containers. Once again, if the unthinkable happens, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Linda Quinn. I'm an owner at Boris Head 8, which is at 507 Ocean Boulevard. Um, we're an eight-unit association. Um, it was approved and built in 2001. Uh, we, similarly to the gentleman that was before me, have a single driveway, uh, which we do not have access for the large trucks to come in to get dumpsters. I have received two quotes. The only quote, the, the list of things that were sent out by the town. Um, only state line and waste management will provide curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. um, waste management was two and a half times what state line was charging. Um, so you're actually putting us in a situation where we can be charged whatever the market will bear. Um, and quite frankly, uh, in our eight units, we provide about $65,000 in tax revenue to the town. So a $4 per month or $4 per cart cost um, I would encourage you to do this. First of all, hold this in abeyance until we have more discussion around it. And second of all, if cost is the issue, why would we be paying somebody else? If it's a cost for the town, perhaps consider a surcharge to pay for that. Hmm. And that way, at least we know that the cost can be controlled somewhat. Thank you so much. Thank you.
My name's Dave Morrison. I'm at 30 Kings Highway Water Glades Condominiums. Um, I was here last week at the uh, April 15th meeting where the business people were here to talk about yeah. their problem. Um, my, from that, I got the feeling that the real problem here is the amount of trash that's being brought in. Uh, and, and I understand that. It's increasing in cost and whatever, and the recycling is a problem now with the contamination fee and the glass and all that. We understand all that, and the idea is what we, what we want to do is rather than make a quick decision and say we're going to stop picking up trash, we'd like to maybe come up with another alternative. The business people are going to have an um, opportunity to have a meeting or a committee put together to try and help you people out and solve the problem of the, the cost of trash. We're, we're saying we've got a bunch of people here now mm -hmm. that are all that are together. We're taking names and Good. trying to put people together and put, the, put together a coalition where we can start and maybe help you people out by, by doing a couple of things. One is the town does a terrible job of letting us know how to recycle. I have no clue how to recycle. I mean, I, you've told me things here last week that I didn't know about. Plastic bags and putting stuff in plastic bags, you can't do that. Um, dirty paper. I've got stuff that comes in as uh, circulars, just little cards. I don't know if I can recycle that or not. I've been told if it's glossy, you can't recycle it. I have no idea. What I'd like to do is have the town come up with a recycling program that we could br bring to our uh, yearly meetings or our bi-yearly meetings. Mm -hmm. We'd go in and, and we, could, we could educate our people. That's, I guess you sent out 1,700 notices from what I gather, 1,000, whatever it is. That's, seven, that's more people now that would be educated on how to recycle. We'd also talk about the glass situation. Yeah. There's nothing to stop us from getting in with the business people and we could, we could separate our glass. We could take the glass in, in the condominiums, put them in a container once a week. Someone go, drives down and throws them in the, the wherever you're going to have that dumpster for uh, the business people. To me, it's a way of maybe, but rather than getting all these people upset and, and, and truthfully, I guess truthfully say that the town is trying to screw us, why don't we just say, let's try, let's try something different first. Let's not just cut everybody off and start the problems of trying to find a dumpster company that will take us on. Why don't we just try and first try this if it doesn't work. I mean, you don't even know when, if you stop us from having trash collection, you don't know what that resulting amount will be. Can you tell me how much you're going to save? Will, will it bring the cost down to where you're looking for? What if it doesn't? Then you're going to, have, you're going to be able to say that well, we're going to go now to the the two family houses because we didn't make enough enough savings there. Or who knows, if, if you don't have that savings, are we gonna go to a three family, I mean a three bedroom house and say, you got kids, you, you got too much trash. We're gonna cut you off. <coughs> Where does it stop? Let's find a way to solve this problem first without having to upset all these people. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, you got, uh, if you say a thousand, you got a thousand voters here. If you think you're gonna get a budget passed. If you upset these people, you'll be in default budget for the rest of your life. There's a lot of angry people out there. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Shavs. I'm at 19 Fuller Acres in Hampton. Our condo association is three small units with no room on the side. We have our few parking spaces in the front and that's the only access to the property. We use one recycle bin and one trash bin for the three units. Always have, I'm a bit of a recycle Nazi, so I'm very interested in hearing the problems with glass yeah. and I wasn't going to say anything until I heard the gentleman ahead of me speak because I thought everything had been said. But I think that uh, recycling education be really important and not just for the condo association but for this whole town. If that's mm -hmm. an issue, then maybe developing a program with a brochure that could be sent to the houses. You have meetings on TV. These will be watched over and over again ad nauseum, as you know, they rebroadcast. You know, and educate people and bring it to the schools. It's a fantastic way to really bring up the whole town yeah. on how to recycle properly. So you have a great opportunity here not to make condo owners feel like you arbitrarily are screwing them, pardon my language, <laughs> and also to uh, improve the future of the town and its environment. Thank you. Thank you. Deb Cheatham, 30 Kings Highway, Waterglade Villas. Um, 
everyone here probably got a letter from the town letting them know along with either a site plan or highlighted version of their condominium documents. Uh, the condominium documents that were sent out varied from misinterpretations of what was in the document, mm -hmm. sections that allow a board of directors to access condominium association funds to make sure that anything that needed to be done for services were done within that condominium, but not necessarily that you used that item. For example, you sent out ones where uh, it includes people using condo funds to maintain the pool in an association that doesn't own a pool. Um, so these are just examples of misinterpretations that occurred in these condominium documents, but I also want to urge you to reconsider the fact that the site plans in this town were agreed upon and signed, board, signed for by the planning board and went before the town and were approved sometimes one year, sometimes five years apart from when the condominium documents were done. The two are not tied together as part of an approval of a condominium association for the town. They are separate and they are not bound to be changed unless explicitly written in the documents that they can't be changed without the approval of the town. Mm -hmm. They are the declaration of the association and free to be changed in any manner they see fit. Uh, I, I thank you for bringing up uh, the 2011 article that was approved. Yep. However, we had a 2014 vote that would have overturned that, which was 43A that sub su supersedes the 2011 vote. Um, so I would urge the board tonight to take a vote to reconsider the letters that they have sent out, retract the decision until a committee can be formed that also contains commercial, condominium, and residential uh, voters in the town, um, and that you uh, come up with maybe a potential plan that could serve all of us. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'd urge you to vote tonight. And we will be upstairs um, taking other members' names for the associations that you're in so that we can work communitively. Thank Thanks you. for your comment. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brian Fox, I'm president of Escar Police Condor Association. Um, just something that hasn't been addressed yet is there's the additional cost of trash pickup, but then there's also the additional cost wear and tear on these facilities that everybody's paying for. Mm -hmm. So there's damages to of the heavy trucks. There's now facilities and infrastructure that has to be added at each of the units down at the beach and or around town to hide trash cans, to hide dumpsters. So that's just another thing to think about it's not just your trash pickup costs. It's also the wear and tear on your property yeah. and around the town as well. Because yeah. now we have X number of vendors now driving around heavy trucks, damaging the town streets, et cetera. And we all know how that goes with deteriorating streets around here. So just my piece. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Anybody would like to speak? Anyone else like to speak? Uh, good evening. Uh, Victor DeMarco, I'm the uh, manager of a condominium on High Street. I used to own a unit there and they asked me to stay on as a manager. It's six units, three duplexes. It had been in existence since I believe 1979. Uh, trash has always been picked up. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we have carts that go to the street and picked up at the street. Mm -hmm. I just want to uh, bring to your attention that I think something, uh, nobody here except the town manager is probably aware of this. There was a, a notice distributed by the then chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Nichols, explaining the whole concept of us going into this new form of trash pickup okay. with trucks, and, and it mm -hmm. came to well over millions of dollars. Then we underestimated the cuts by a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and, and it boiled down to it was supposed to cost us twenty-two thousand dollars extra, and we were going to save all kinds of money 
by having these trucks. And we were going to have two part-time people delivering the dump dumpsters because uh, we didn't want to pay them any benefits. So think that, look that up, do on file. Uh, it can't be a cost factor we're dealing with because even the costs that have been presented to us are inaccurate. You, you're not taking in the repairs of those vehicles. You're not taking in the depreciation costs of those vehicles. We were given a 10-year life. We were told, the town manager told us that would be a 10-year life in those vehicles. They lasted about four. Yeah. You know, and, and we were going to buy the dump, I guess, from the, we paid for those, and we bought the hydraulic push-off dumps, yeah. which was like $250,000 a piece. I mean, I think of these figures, I was on the budget committee, the amount of money that we spent to mm -hmm. go to picking up mm -hmm. the trash rather than picking up by individuals. Yeah which I think is good because it saves the backs of the people and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we can't be talking money here because we spent a fortune to get to where we are. You know, there are businesses down there that have 20, 20 carts sitting yeah. here every day. So what if everybody, uh, every condominium got together and said, okay, let's say, hey, look, at, I got a street. Bring down your 20, 20 carts and put them in front of my house. You'd have to pick them up. I have no restriction on how much I could dump if I have a cart. Yeah. Yeah. So I could have 20 carts in front of my condominium or my home, mm -hmm. and you'd pick them up. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. You've you got to get off the money issue. you got to get off Thanks what's for your comments. Everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, what number? Uh, 475 to 481. 475. Any other speakers? <clears throat> Thanks for letting me speak. Uh, my name is Charles Dussault, and I'm, I'm the president of the 1517 K Street Kinsale Court Condominium Association. Mm -hmm. And I would like to just uh, basically second all the comments I've heard previously. I think they've hit the mark. Uh, we have all the same issues. Uh, two points I'd like to make is one, uh, we have two, two buildings with six units apiece. In each of those buildings, uh, during the majority of the year, only two of them are occupied each. So the amount of trash we actually generate is pretty small. Mm -hmm. You're talking probably one or two cans uh, uh, whenever they pick up. During the summer, of course, they, they're more fully occupied and you get more trash, yeah. but uh, so does in the rest of the beach. So we know there's gonna be trash trucks going up and down the beach every morning like, we, like they do and picking things up. So I think it's you know, patently unfair that we're being sig signaled out to uh, not have trash pickup. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that's the case, we would be strongly uh, looking for a tax abatement. Mm -hmm. Thank so the, you. the other point I'd like to make, I still have time, I think, <laughs> is that we are contemplating make, if, if we are on our own for our trash, yeah. um, they're all private units. The board is only responsible for common areas people generate their trash in their own unit and they're gonna be on their own. What they do with that trash, it's not gonna be the board's responsibility. So we're half a block from the beach, there's trash containers there, maybe they throw them there, there's residents near us, maybe they throw them in the residence trash can. Wow. So you're just forcing us into a situation, I believe that's gonna make people act in, in an incorrect manner. So yeah, I you. urge the board to uh, thank you. delay Thank this. you very so, much. Uh, Anyone else wanting to speak? Paul Moore in 6N Street. First off, I want to commend you all. This is a great town to be part of. Unfortunately, listening to last week and being here tonight, it's not a good mark for this town, for the goodness that this town does on the beach and uptown. I don't like pitting people against people. But when you're talking about condominiums, what I've heard the people come up here tonight as the unit I live in is eight units. They're all pretty small units very small land to place any type of dumpster at. I was sitting in my unit today and I was looking outside. Lady across the street has seven units. She owns them all. She pays an assessed value. $465,700. Guy in a corner, 
Ocean Boulevard and N Street has six unit apartment, has an assessed value of 552,600. Other properties I'm aware of from when I was a kid living on the beach, 7J Street, six apartment, nine rooms, 408,900. 11F Street, five apartments, eight rooms, 649,700 assessed value. 6N Street, eight units, assessed value, add all eight units up, 917,400 assessed value on that. So how do you differ differentiate between apartments and condos? As been said in SARs, there's been laws put in the state, so you don't discriminate against different type of owners. So I'd hope you consider tabling this, have some great discussion. There's other ways to do this that is fair to everybody. You want to put in, stop picking up trash, do it town wide. Yep. If you want to do dump uh, fee, fee per barrel. Is it going to be fair for everyone? No. Our unit, eight people, we're probably there April to November, most of everyone there. None of us have children in the school system. We, we don't mind paying. We pay our extra tax for the activities at the beach. But let's be fair about this. So maybe you need to do a per barrel fee if you're going to do anything. And then everyone pays the same thing, whether you have 22 barrels or you have one barrel. But this piecemealing isn't going to work. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. Good evening. And I want to thank you for your service. I know that it's not easy to be sitting here <laughs> having to face the, the crowds um, from my own experience. Um, my name is Laura Walta. I'm the president of 22 K Street Beach Haven. And um, as Jeanette was saying earlier, we're eight uh, residential units. We, the majority of us are retired. There are no children. Um, most of us are on fixed income. And the idea that we would be discriminated against because we live in a condo mm -hmm. as opposed to a house, and yet we're all paying our fair share of taxes, and we all do our fair share of keeping up the property, making it, keeping it looking nice, yeah. residing, you know, the whole bit. And I just <laughs> feel that in our case, being on the older side, we feel like what makes everybody think that we can even afford to take care of this problem? Um, we bought, we all bought with the assurances that there was town pickup and that our um, monthly assessments were for the maintenance of the exterior of the building and the roof and the siding. And so um, we just feel a little deceived knowing that the plans had been approved the way that they were presented and that we were told that we would have city pickup. So I do hope that um, you will take the opportunity to think about other ways and you know think about there are a lot of people that come to the beach for the weekend or for the week. They aren't residents of the Hampton. And, you know, perhaps our, uh, those that rent need to up their rentals to, you know, we, there's a tax for renting your condos and your apartments, and maybe that tax increases. But there have got to be other ways than to just discriminate against people who live in a condo building that arbitrarily is more than five units. Yeah. So I thank you, and I wish you luck with your deliberations. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else looking to speak? Seeing none, we will bring it back to the board. Mrs. Wolsey. Now, Mr. Chairman, I will move that we uh, put a moratorium on any action and try to get a, together uh, in a better informed uh, uh, meeting and try to work out and explore what's been said tonight and give us an idea what we can do 
to uh, help this section of our population in this community. Okay. And, uh, Regina. If that's a motion, yes. I would so second it. Well, first of all, uh, you didn't put, put any specifics into it. Well, we need to sit down and work out what we're going to do about so this. So what problem. timeline are you talking? I, like I don't week, know. Last week there was a timeline that went first. There's going to be, uh, it's going to be taken care of within the next six months. Yep. And there's going to be a, uh, a committee. And I, for one, am in favor of making this all one committee yep. myself. Yep. Yep. And yes. uh, I think that we need to um, take into account about this six-month thing. Um, and where does that stand, Mr. Walsh? Well, the six month will just be perfect because it, it will bring into, into play all the financial ends of things because the budget will be, be prepared during that period mm -hmm. of time. So you'll yeah. know exactly what you're talking about from a money standpoint, mm -hmm. from an equipment standpoint. This should all come together mm -hmm. as a single package so that you have the final mm -hmm. end result for everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, where does it stand about any talk of the committee that was mentioned about last week? Well, that's up to the board to appoint. Okay. So uh, you need to appoint that probably within the next two weeks. Right. Well, oh, let, wait a minute. To start Hopefully. something. Yeah. Um, okay. So we I'm, need... I want to reconfigure my motion to make it a little more specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we will set a six-month deadline and set up a committee to study this, uh, for this segment of our community because there are significant concerns and we should have a uh, committee put together of local residents and some of the nice people out here and set a, a deadline for what November 1st May June July yeah something like that October 1st or November 1st it's uh and bring in whatever expertise from public works that we would need. Right. So it would be, we could say November 1st. Yeah. November 1st. And we will uh, talk about how this committee is going to be set up. We can't really give the specifics right. of that because we're going to have to really look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll decide exactly. Uh, we'll have some more specifics about the uh, committee. But I feel strongly that this should be uh, um, a tied right to the other committee because it's the same thing as the beach trash as far as I'm concerned I've been concerned about that right from the beginning mm -hmm. um, we have a first and we have a second Regina second it yeah, I and second. all those in favor let's go around and discuss uh, what yeah well, I want to discuss. discussion okay. yeah discussion. yeah let's have discussion okay I want to second Mary Louise's motion and I also agree that we should definitely have the one committee for everything commercial yeah. condo whatever yep. you are figure out what we're going to do going forward and also I did want to um, bring up something I spoke with uh, one of the folks over at Harris real estate and he actually gave me a spreadsheet that he's looked on because I know what you're talking about budget lack of revenues is an issue but he gave me a spreadsheet that pinpoints uh, 377 ocean 275 ocean 339 ocean 128 Ashworth Ave 83 ocean and also has the potential tax increase for the Kenfill if that project does get approved. And his calculations, which I have not gone back and verified whether or not each unit actually pays this in taxes, but it's an additional tax increase of over $1.2 million just for those five properties that are all located down the main beach. Mm. So I just wanted to point that out real quick, and I think that the board is the, mo the motion is exactly what I would have motioned, Mary Louise. And I also wanted to uh, mm -hmm. commend Mary Louise for finding that 2011 Warren article for us because she is diligently always looking through all the te prior town financial reports to make sure we don't miss anything. So I just wanted to bring that up. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, um, I just, you know, I agree with that we shouldn't do anything tonight. But I think that there's a lot more that goes into this committee that we really have to uh, investigate. I mean, condo documents are legal documents, and they can't just be changed by the condo. They have to be filed. So, I mean, you, you do need legal to look into this with you on no, the whole I thing. I agree. And uh, it's highly 
it's highly unfair, and it's unfair to somebody to go to them and say, we've been picking it up, now we're not going to. But you also have condos that have been paying for their, to have theirs picked up all along. So what about those people? Now, I'm going to abstain from the vote because I live in a condo, so I think I have a conflict of interest uh, on this. But, you know, my condo, I know, has been paying for their trash and recycling to be picked up all along. So what do you do about those? Do you add those into this? You know, we've got to really be. take a very serious look at this. Mm. And you've yeah. got to take, you know, you've got to take a legal look at it. You've got to take it from the aspect of what did people say when they, when they built these condos? I mean, mm -hmm. so there's a lot to go into it. So I, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to abstain for the vote because mm -hmm. I do live in a condo and mm -hmm. it will affect me. Uh, and I think that's a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say that this, you know, uh, this is my 15th year being here, and this has come up so many times. Mm -hmm. It's come up over and over. It's been discussed. I know there were things here said tonight that, you know, we should have brought this up earlier in the year. It's all we've talked about all year. People just don't. It's the same thing. People say, well, what about the recycling committee? We've done that. With lack of interest, it finally stopped. Uh, we've done all of these things. And I was on the board that um, when this came as a discussion, very similar to what we have here tonight, where a lot of people came, and I was the, uh, uh, you know, t I was known as the person that was the trash selectman. <laughs> all we did was talk about trash, the king of trash. And I was on the commit on, on these boards that got it so just to calm it down the last time, or there's probably been several times since then, um, where if people could bring the trash out to the street, we would pick it up. And that's, you know, that went on for several years where everyone was happy with that. Then times came along when, again, maybe people mention at DPW or we had a, uh, a DPW director that at one point wanted to charge by the bag and we've had so many different things have come up um, but at some point and I'll tell you I was against it at the time um, was it was limited to five and uh, and then that just sort of stayed there for for quite a while um, but I think one of the things that has to be discussed is was always able to work out as long as the people were able to um, bring their trash to the street. One of the things that wasn't talked about, and there's a lot that hasn't been talked about here about what is legal and what isn't legal. Basically, what the law is in New Hampshire is you cannot go on to people's property to pick up their trash. So people had to bring it to the street, and that was how we were working on it all the other times, that it was against state law for private uh, pickup people you know, like our trash collectors, to go on to your properties. Now, considering that was what the law was supposed to be, it didn't, I still saw that happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I, there's been a lot of unfairness. People mentioned here tonight about the um, 20 barrels from businesses. There are barrels, businesses that are picking up many, many more than 20 barrels. Mm -hmm. So this is very unfair, and it has to be looked at in a big, from a bigger picture. And I think that uh, as far as I'm glad to hear that we have an agreement that this should be part of the same committee um, because I think it's, that's what will make it fair. <clears throat> and um, it will take a while before we can get the, figure out how to get this commission going. It will be at least two or three weeks. And Mrs. Wolsey, I'm speaking. Yes, I know. Okay, I'm so sorry. when I'm finished, I'll let you know. Oh, well, that's okay. Fine. And um, so uh, I appreciate everyone's interest. I think you're making a good decision to try to keep informed. Um, up, you know, someone's taking names upstairs, but we can. You know, we're all going to work at this together. Mr. Welch is in his office is here to answer anyone's questions that has that comes in. You know, you can go, always go into his office and get information, or you can go to the DPW. So uh, we are, we don't have a full board here tonight either. Uh, Mr. Bridal is in here, and so this will we will take it into consideration. All that's been said here tonight, 
um, and we want it to be fair to everyone. And I think that's the big thing that's come out of this meeting from what I can see, that we are looking for a fair solution for everyone. Mrs. Wolseley. Uh, after we complete our vote, which I assume we are going to do, I just want to uh, ask that we add a stipulation to the record that there will be no change until after the committee has had its run up to November 1st. Yes. And that will include any intensification mm -hmm. from what's being but done should, now. That should be written and into I the... And I think that uh, should have been done last week, and I don't believe it was, and that might be something yeah. we want to revisit. Yeah. So all those in favor? I agree. Three I just and one. So is that committee... We're going to include condo associations like gyms if they would like to join so that we Every, can incorporate Whoever it. wants to be part of it. But, I mean, every, they, don't, they can live in a house and be part of it. Exactly. Um, but yeah. the thing is, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to be discussed here because if it does go to that, there are many, many more condos and uh, that are as big as gym. How many are in your unit? 30. 39, I think. Yeah. So and there are, are many that are even bigger than that. So yeah. there's going to be a lot of questions here. It will probably take more than six months from what I, you know, I would. Mm -hmm. But these are the small, you know, the people that live in these condos mm -hmm. here uh, tonight. We appreciate mm -hmm. that everyone came out. Yeah. So we have a vote. It's three. One abstention. one abstention. And one not here tonight. Yeah. And we'll have the clarification printed in the record. Yeah. That there will be no further action until the committee yes. finishes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You take questions, sir? Not just, questions. Well, all right. I just wanted to say when we're talking about a committee with the condos and the business, I was just wondering where huge apartment buildings fall in on that. Well, we're gonna. It's gonna yeah, have I mean, to be dealt with. We'll like be talking said, this over yeah. as a board. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much yeah. for Thank coming. You. Thank you for everyone for coming tonight. Thank you. We ought to take a five minute break. Yeah. And we'll be taking a five minute break. Yeah.
public comment for anyone that might want some public comment. Mr. Preston. Yep. Charlie Preston, 47 Great Path. I'm going to make this very quick, and um, I think I'll talk to you later if you get an appointment on some of the stuff that I wanted to talk to you guys about. It's a busy night. Um, on the minutes that you're going to be approving tonight on uh, April 1st, it was brought up that I was asking that in, in the JOP that we get, let them have people park. In the hours that were on there, I don't know if it was my mistake, if it was Transcar, in the hours that they have on there now, you could park from 9 p.m. 5 a.m. Well, what I my intention was that you could park from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. Uh -huh. was the overnight. So the hours on the on the on the minutes. And then I saw you were talking about parking meters, and that's now off at another time. So I just want to make that correction on the uh, on the minutes of April 1st. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. Public officials have a responsibility to protect the public purse. Taxpayers have a right to demand accountability for every tax dollar spent. Transparency in hiring public employees should include a reveal of the candidate's prior experience and skills in a competitive setting. It is unacceptable to use the power of the purse to create lucrative jobs for friends of elected officials. In November 2014, the board created a new part-time position, Assistant Town Manager Human Resources, for a recently retired police chief using surplus funds in the legal budget due to the death of Attorney Robertson. This appointment was made without any open application process. Instead of, dis uh, instead of discontinuing funding for this fake position after a trial year, the position has continued on into 2019. The annual salary for this 32-hour-a-week position is $87,000 a year. How many New Hampshire towns the size of Hampton are paying for two positions in the manager's office? In 2018, our taxpayers paid $205,464.14 just for those two positions. On November 29, 2017, Selectmen drew up a more elaborate contract to redefine the two manager positions. This new deal ended Mr. Welch's service on June 30, 2020 and stipulated that Assistant Manager Sullivan would take over on July 1, 2020, with Mr. Welch's service reduced to part-time with no benefits. The co a copy of this agreement is online, and the part that really makes me cross says it is number six, severance. Should the Town of Hampton desire to terminate this agreement for any reason for cause, the deputy town manager shall be entitled to severance benefits, which shall consist of a lump sum payment of 12 months gross salary. Additionally, any severance benefits shall include a lump sum cash payment of any unused leave and holidays. I have tried to get our current board to negotiate a replacement contract, removing the fake assistant manager position, a saving of about 88000 a year. It is an insult to this community to throw our 12-year town manager under the bus. As I fulfill my sworn duty to represent all taxpayers, I confirm that a former police chief is not sufficiently qualified for Mr. Welch's job, and funding two town manager positions is fiscal insanity. A board must understand that any new or replacement position should always be subject to competitive open application process. And I don't want to pay any, pay any severance, but I'm not one of the individuals who drew up the contract. Any other comment, uh, public comment? Real quick, Victor Marco. 11 Milburn Avenue on Hampton. I'm the designated parking lot supervisor for the last 21 years. Yeah. Uh, I 
was under the impression that you were going to be talking about parking tonight. I just wanted to remind all of you that in 21 years, I've never been asked one time what the operation down there was. I've never had a board of selectmen or the town manager ever come down to see how we work or how it was done. Uh, your assistant town manager could tell you how I was picked because I was asked. I did not apply for this job. I was asked by the then current town manager by phone if I do him a favor and come down and take over the operation because it was one week before it opened and the guy that had accepted the position quit and he took a third of the pay that was designated for that position. I accepted it. He wanted me because I was a former police officer and an accountant. If you ever saw what I was handed, yeah. you would have turned your back and walked away. I took over, I lost 300 spots when I put a new police place station in. I went from $200,000 a year to over $700,000 a year. I put a whole schedule together, a complete accounting schedule. I have been accurate for 20 years. And you can talk to our town treasurer. I, I give a receipt for every deposit we made. It matched with every backup sheet and it matched to the, to the uh, bank statements. I know what I was doing and I did, it, I thought, a very good job. And I did it for two thirds of the pay. And I worked, I don't know how many hours. Now, when recently, I, I'm under a contract, I don't understand what it is, but I'm not allowed to start work until May 1st and I have to leave work the day after the seafood festival. That's fine with me. I didn't draw it up. I don't know why, where that came from, but that was fine. And the money changeover probably was a very smart move because of the amount of money we have there. I used to handle it all. And I stand on my honesty because we were never shot. If we were shot, we were shot like 80 bucks out of that 600,000. If most of the time we're over. Uh, the accountant here, will, the town accountant will tell you that also. So I did my job and I still do my job. Uh, I thought the police department did a great job. They had the money. All of a sudden we had money. We bought all kinds of barriers and this and that and this and that. You know, we didn't even have bathroom facilities for our, for our workers. Yeah. And you know what I went through just to get a bathroom at Church Street. If it wasn't for Mary Louise, they'd still be urinating in glass <laughs> bottles. I mean, this is how bad it was down yeah. there. Yeah. And Thank you I for your comments. I think we went a long way with it. That's all I was Thank saying. Thank you. It was on the agenda. Someday, somebody might want to ask me how we run mm -hmm. the place. And I'd be more than happy Thank to explain you. it. Yeah. Thank you. Right, Any you. other comments tonight? Public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to <coughs> announcements and community calendar. Mrs. Wolseley. Well, I just mentioned to the, um, to Ms. Mrs. Hale, your deputy public works director, for the, those of you who live uh, on High Street and near Little River Road, the pavement is terribly broken up and public works wow. will put a sign there um, right at five corners, so be careful how you drive. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thank Waddell? You. I have plenty, but I don't have nothing. <laughs> and I don't have anything to say. Uh, although it's nice to have the weather getting a little bit nicer. Um, I'm not very warm today. No, no. <laughs> uh, that's why I didn't say too much. Um, so we have the approval of the meetings, April 1st. I also move that we approve the meeting of April 1st public session. Uh, do we want to make those yeah, corrections Charlie's. that Charlie made? Yes. Yeah. So, so fi uh, 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. And okay, that was it? I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor? 
and for the April 8th public session. Mr. Chairman, why is the April 8th non-public not listed here? I would have to ask Christina. Can't tell you. Did you want to, uh, is, do we have a... a uh, I'll move the April 8th public session minutes um, and uh, with an understanding that we should address Do we have a second? I yeah. abstain. I wasn't here. Yeah. Jim, I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Three and one abstention and mm -hmm. one person not here. Yeah. Um, next, we have the consent agenda. I also will, move. We, uh, we have 2019 veterans credits. Uh, 2019 elderly credits, 2019 blind disabled credits, Conservation Commission donations, uh, entertainment license, lease land commission appointments, and license for coin operated amusement devices, one day entertainment license for a road race, parade and public gathering license, and road closure permit for the Smutty Nose 5K. Mr. Chairman. We have a, a, mo a yeah. motion. Yeah, I just want to clarify something on number six, if I could, lease land commission appointments. I verify with the town manager that these are additional appointments this morning, and the two people that are already appointed to the commission, the commission will still be on there. These are additional ones that we were missing. So okay. I'll second Mary Louise's All motion. those in favor? Unanimous. And um, we have. Uh, Christy, I think. Okay, can I say something? Yes. I just wanted to thank Mrs. Peralt for uh, being out in the audience, and she's one of the commission members. Thank you, Cindy, for coming in and waiting. Um, <laughs> next, we have Christy Pulliam. 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 Finance Director with her yes. monthly financials. Yeah, I have a couple items tonight, but we'll start with the financials. So uh, you guys received the March financials. They're in your mailbox and on the yeah. website. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 2018 to 2019. The 2019 revenue is higher than 18 by $61,951. The month's total income was $372,380. Of that, motor vehicles came in at $277,368. Interest on taxes at $15,325. Building permits at $15,371. Departmental income at $37,963. Summer parking um, lot leases went out at for $51,810 and the real estate tax at $43,255. On the expense side, the target was 25% and were 23.04% spent or under budget by $494,000. Across the budget, you will find line items that are over target and uh, many that are under target. A lot of them are um, seasonal types of things like in the police department for support services, those really gear up, um, starting mm. probably like Memorial Day and stuff. Yeah. And then under personnel administration, you'll see that the bank buyback line is at 115.75%. That's the one-time uh, payout of leave, sick and vacation, or sick time and leave time for non sick time for union members and uh, leave time for non-union that's done in the payroll in January. So that should stay flat there. The employee separation cost is at 33.06%. Under the legal department, outside counsel fees is at 82.31%, and the legal department as a whole is over target at 31.09%. Under general government, government buildings, the uh, building maintenance line is at 62.48%. Police, fire, and public works have line items that are over target as well, but all of those budgets are currently under the target of 25%. The police department is at 18.15%. Fire Department is at 20.99% and Public Works is at 22.54%. Um, in the other fund section, Fund 24, the Recreation Fund, has a balance of $219,672. Fund 25 for Cable Committee has a balance of $440,839. 
Fund 26 for private detail has a balance of $275,931. And Fund 27, the EMS fund, has a balance of $314,184. And then lastly, the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2019, total $10,926. And the balance in that fund is $92,015. Thank Sorry, you. I was fast. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Questions, Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, not right now, thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. Regina? Uh, yes, I have questions. So you pointed out the bank buyback line item is at 116, almost 116 percent, but you stated that that's because it was all paid out. In yeah, that's a one-time payroll that's done in January. Okay, and you noted outside counsel was at 82 percent. And also, um, I have a question on revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a couple of years ago, I think you started doing the adjusted budgets on a quarterly basis. Yes. So you have brought up for the shared revenue, because uh, from the state of New Hampshire, we have estimated revenues of $1.2 million. Yes. And you've bumped that from seven hundred to 725000 Is that... Yeah, um, based on what rooms and meals came in in December of last year, so I've changed it slightly um, to reflect. Well, we won't know that until yeah. when we do set the um, tax rate in November, we'll do estimated revenues um, that are due by September 1st. And when we do estimated revenues, usually DRA will give us a good idea of what the rooms and uh, meals tax is because they usually will have, the state will have uh, mm. shared that information with them at that time, so... Yeah, because looking at what they're doing right now, I think it's planning on being the same amount as we got last year. Mm. Um, and then the other question I have on the financials is, are you going to be talking about that? Oh, yep, there you go. You got it right there. Yeah. So on the financials for the cable committee fund. Yes. I have a question on the balance, the prior year 2018, on the expenditure activity. It says we reimbursed SAU 90, 72,000. Yes. And then it shows up again on the balance to date. So is that done again for this year? I'd have to go and look and see if we've paid them again this year already or not. I don't know. I don't think we have. That could be an error. Okay. All right. I'll check that out. All right. Thank you. I don't have any other questions at this time. Good. Mr. Waddell? Uh, yes. Um, so we're 495. 4,727 under budget. Yes. And we were over budget less. Yes. As we go through the year, what do you think? Projections. I think that it will be tight. I think we'll know it all. It's all, a lot of it's weather, too, as the police chief and fire chief and everyone will always tell you guys, depending on the weather and what happens down there. Okay. We'll do. Depend whether you can have some savings in like the police department and stuff. Okay, but you've got a good handle on it every yes. month. We're yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you want to continue? Uh, yeah, I there was had been a request um, by the budget committee. I think Regina had brought it to my attention, and then Rusty had sent an email to us. So I was kind of just wanted to show you as a board quickly um, what I was coming up with in regards to. Um, a tool that could be useful. It's been requested by the budget committee, but could also be useful to our department heads mm -hmm. and I think to the manager and the assistant town manager when we get ready to set budgets for um, 2020. We're already talking about that. So basically this just shows um, the average for expenditures for the past five years and then there's a three-year and a five-year average on each of those. Then I also had another tab here that shows us the same information, but basically going through and showing us what was budgeted each of those years, and then what the three and the five year average of each of those budget lines are. Um, yeah. And then I kind of summarized it up to here that shows you, on here it'll show you the three year average budget amount for each line, and then the three year average like actual expenditures for that line, so you can kind of see how for the most part, when you look through it, you'll find that everything is kind of right in line. There isn't too many um, things that jump out at you, but um, it was a tool that has been asked for. We've worked on it in-house. Fred and Jamie and I have used it for a couple of years 
for probably two years now, I think, Fred, that we probably looked yes. at like the averages when we're reviewing budgets and stuff. And so um, the request had been made and I felt um, after talking with Jamie and Fred that it should be brought to the Board of Selectmen first um, to see what the board thought of it and then it can be distributed from there based on what the board feels. So that was that. That was all I had on that. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? No, nice job, Christy. Yep. Thank you. Regina? Not a question. Um, just, yeah, excellent job. I think that I know you guys have used it up in management, but I yeah. think that actually for the Board of Selectmen, I know I'm interested in mm -hmm. obtaining a copy of it, and I think it will provide the uh, analytical that some of the budget committee members or people that influence budget committee members are looking for. So if we, it's, and it could be used in conjunction with the budget yeah. itself so as not to upset your schedule with the budget. So I thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And then on, oh, sorry. Yeah, and Mr. Waddell. Oh, I'm set. It? No, okay. okay. All right, so then on the other agenda, I think I had two more points. Number two was in regards to the plots against Anderson. That's just their contract. We went out to bid um, last year. It's a three-year contract, but it has to be signed. So Fred has a copy of that to be signed um, by the board. <coughs> and then the last item that I had was uh, website design. It was a Warren article from 2018. Um, and so we've been working with our developers on website design. And this isn't interactive yet because it's still in the design phase, but we felt that we should at least bring it to the board and show you what we've kind of come up with so you guys can see where we're going with it. And then I can, depending on how much you want to see, if anyone wants to stop in and see me, they can. Or I have a couple other websites that I could show you actually how they work. But basically what will happen here is you have the buttons along the side and then the buttons along the bottom. And so those will kind of be like target buttons. So like one will be like, these aren't the actual names what they'll be, but one will be like home. So it would bring you right back to the top. We'll have one that's for notify me. So people will be able to go in now and sign up online. They'll have a login and they'll sign up online and for whatever notifications that they would like to receive, whether it's flooding or trash or whatever it is that they want, they'll be able to sign up to get those things. We can have a button that said, um, meetings, uh, minutes, and agendas, and they'd be able to click right there and it would bring them right to all the different uh, agendas and minutes for different boards or committees. Um, car registration, I mean, it's an endless. So we have, we're have we gonna have like 11 buttons there. So we'll have the ones on the left side that'll stay stationary when you scroll down, and then we'll have the bottom um, three buttons there, or the six buttons there that will be different topics. And then on the top, there's a search bar, so they'll be able to search, so if they wanna, see something that Regina said at a meeting, they could just search Regina Barnes and all the times that Regina Barnes has said something in a, whether they're in minutes or on agenda, wherever her name comes up on the website, it'll, you'll be able to search now, which is I know it's one of the mm -hmm. functions okay. that everyone has been looking for because now you can't search on the town website. You have to literally click, but we can click on minutes now. When do we talk about trash and recycling? And all the meetings when you guys talked about trash and recycling will come up. Um, just by hitting search. So that's one of the key things. And then across the top, it's standard, similar to what we have now. We'll have like government, so it'll have like all your departments and stuff in it. And um, I think the buttons across the top will be government, residents, businesses, visitors, and how do I. So they literally can go to one that's called how do I, and they'll be able to see, you know, how do I register my car? Or how do I find the trash and recycling schedule? How do I find minutes, whatever people are looking for will be there. And then when you scroll down here, you'll see in the middle, we'll have, we're gonna have three sections. One will be news, one will be calendar. So that would be like the meetings and stuff that'll come up. And then the last column will be announcements. So depending on how we decide to use that, um, if the announcements will be for events maybe that are happening in town, or maybe the announcements will be, you know, it's gonna flood, some of those key things that we put up on the website. But, and then there'll also be a view all, so they can click right there and view all the things that fall into that category. Um, so that's kind of what we've been looking. A lot of the colors we're still working on, but a, a lot of times we don't have a whole bunch of say in the colors because everything has to be ADA compliant now. So sometimes I'll say, oh, I don't like that color, and they'll be like, well, it has to be that color, and they'll give the, the reason that they're required to be um, compliant with ADA. 
in compliance and stuff. So um, that's kind of the gist of it. And let me just show you real quick, just because we put a lot of work into this. And <laughs> so this is kind of the idea of how when you scroll, you wow. lose the top, but then you see the home button there. So when you're scrolling down, you get down to the calendar and the news flash and all of those things. But if you ever want to go back up to the top, you can just click right on home and it, it'll bring you a right back up to the top of the page and stuff. And then the drop down boxes kind of will be similar to this and it'll have like boards and committees and um, departments, documents and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of what we've been doing. I can go more in depth if you would like or I can stop right there. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever you prefer. Questions. The budget committee is gonna faint from excitement. Okay, that's good. Regina. I think it looks really nice. So I think it looks awesome, and you even have all the social media things yeah, right so up at the top, so you can actually go in and grab yeah. it and say whether you want to. Yes. You know, like all the public works messages, yep. things like that. That's awesome. And I actually had one question that I meant to ask you about. You knew it about it ahead of time. The entertainment, all the income that we get from the entertainment licenses. <clears throat> okay, when you sorry. for the ne you can just like email it to me, and then I can bring it on myself. Yeah, I'm sorry, you did ask. No, that yeah, no forgot. problem. <laughs> so, okay. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. And then I just, let me just show you guys real quick. This is what the interior pages will look like. So each department will have their own little page. So they lose the buttons, but they have, the, they still have the three different categories. So they'll have, those are like three panels. And so they'll have those three panels. So like one, they can have all of their contact information if they want. And then on the left side, they can have all like the links and then the um, main events or stories for their department can be in the middle there. So that's kind of where we are at with that. Mr. Waddell? Fine. Okay, you can continue. And that's all I had. That's it? I just, we just, Jamie and I had been talking, we've been working with the developers, we just felt that we should bring it yeah. to the board because we have to kind of approve the design now. It's supposed to be live by the beginning of June or middle of June, I believe, so we figured before we gave them the stamp of approval, we should bring it to you in case anyone said, oh, that is not what we are looking for at all. So, so that's kind of what we are here for. Jamie and you have been working on this? IT mainly? mostly. IT myself and um, Jamie, yes. Yeah. The IT guys have uh, been yeah. very much in the roots of this, working very hard on this well, project. this is long overdue. Um, it looks great, and we mm. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all I have then, I think. We have the contract for the annual audit on the new business. Do you have to stay for that, or should we do that now? I think it was number two on my agenda. It was number too. two on her agenda. So I think it maybe got on there twice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, so you already did it. Yes. Yeah, that was yes. like the second thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to say. <laughs> I just took Thank one, you. One Thank quick you. follow up. I avoid social media like the plague. If I sign, if I go into any of that, will will I get tangled up? Nope. Okay, no, because so you'll I I just shut down. But I, I could have showed you on each thing when you signed up for notify me. You literally get a click on every single thing that you want, so you just wouldn't select to be on any of that. And I think Regina was just pointing out that you could click on like the Twitter or the Facebook, and it would bring you right to the Facebook page for the town or something. So if you didn't click on it, it's not going to do anything okay. to you. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Chief Sawyer Police Department update, I guess. Yeah. Quarterly update. Quarterly update. And Deputy Hobbs. Good grief. Are we done? Yeah. No. I just want to keep the old north bridge here. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Due to my laryngitis I'm recovering from, I'm going to have Deputy Hobbs read a number of the documents that we normally present and then I'll try to answer the questions as they come up. So there's a few things on the uh, agenda for us tonight. I'll start with the first quarter update. Current staff, current staffing level, 36 sworn. In February, Officer James Patton retired after 34 years of service to the department. We congratulate Jim on his retirement. Jim will remain with the department as a part-time officer. Mm -hmm. Officer Zachary Terenzoni was selected to fill the vacant patrol position in February and is scheduled to attend the 179th New Hampshire Police Academy commencing in May. In March, a town meeting, a warrant article was passed by the voters to create an additional school resource officer position. Officer Brandon Whitehead has been selected to fill the SRO position. Officer Whitehead, Whitehead attended the Hampton School System as a student. 
Lieutenant Gidley, a 31-year veteran of the department, has notified us of his intent to retire in June of this year. Dan has worked through the ranks during his career and has been an intricate part of the leadership team for over 18 years. Dan will remain with the department as a part-time officer. Part-time current staffing level is 29 sworn. We currently have six new officer recruits and training scheduled to come to work for the 2019 summer season. The department conducted testing for part-time officer applicants on Saturday, April 13th, 2019. There were 46 applicants scheduled to take the test. There were seven no-shows with four withdrawals. This left 31 applicants taking the written test with scoring a passing grade and moving on to the physical agility test. After the physical agility test, there were 17 applicants scheduled for oral board interviews. At the conclusion of the oral boards, 11 were given conditional offers of employment. As part of the hiring process, those given the conditional offers of employment will begin the next phase of the hiring process, which includes a thorough background investigation, polygraph examination, and psychological evaluation. This process was conducted in, in anticipation of enrolling the su successful applicants into the part-time police ac academy commencing in August. The department's next testing process is scheduled for Saturday, October 5th, 2019. Anyone interested in testing can register online at hamptonpd.com. Civilian personnel, full-time civilian staff, currently at nine. In March, William Bill Gay advised the department of, of his intent to retire in June. Bill has been the custodian at the Hampton Police Department for the last 37 years. Bill has been the, the one to clean up after bu busy summer weekends and keep the Hampton Police Department accessible even during the worst weather conditions imaginable. Bill, you have been an indispensable member of this team and we wish you the very best in your time. Department operations, during the first quarter, there were two major events we successfully held. On the first weekend in February, Special Olympics of New Hampshire held their annual high school plunge and penguin plunge, raise, raising funds for Special Olympics athletes to compete in the summer and winter games. On March 24th, the annual Eastern States 20 mile run came through the beach with runners from around New England participating. I am happy to report that there were no overdose deaths in Hampton during the first quarter of 2019. Even with this improvement, the Patrol Division and the Criminal Investigation Division continue to work diligently with our <coughs> local, state, and federal partners to combat the opioid epidemic the region has experienced. The, <coughs> excuse me. the Department continues to have an officer assigned to a regional federal task force to help combat this issue. The Department has continued with regional efforts working with the Portsmouth Police Department, Greenland Police Department, and the Seabrook Police Department to form a Seacoast uh, sea Region High Intensity Drug Intervention Team utilizing grant funds from the New Hampshire Department of Safety Law Enforcement Opioid Abuse Reduction Initiative. On March 5th, the department participated in another school safety forum sponsored by SAU 90. Hosted by Superintendent Kathleen Murphy, the forum was well attended with an open exchange regarding the challenges of school safety. Beginning in February, on to training. Beginning in February, the New Hampshire Police Academy, part-time officer academy began being held two nights a week in the training room. We will begin our spring firearms training shortly. Public announcements on our website and on local media outlets will be made with more specifics. Looking at our activity for the first quarter, uh, calls for service were down 4%. Motor vehicle stops are down 31%. Arrests are up 6%. DWIs are up 44%. Drug offenses are even. Incidents reported are up 35%. Offenses are up 1%. Felonies down 25%. Parking tickets are up 53%. And accidents are up 1%. And we'll entertain any questions from the board on the quarterly report. Did you want to speak, uh, Jim? Ask any questions? Yeah, on the staffing level, you're currently at 60, 36. Full time. Full time. And what would you like to be at? If I had my druthers, we'd go back to the PERF study of 1988, I believe it was, that recommended uh, 44. Mm. But realistically, in the budgetary time we live in, I know that's not going to be achievable. But the little steps that we've taken with our cooperation with the schools has been great, um, and we'll put those folks to great use. Okay. And part-time, 29 sworn? We're allowed to have up to 70 here. Uh, this is a time of year where we, we tend to hit a low number, and the reason being 
we send out our schedule request to our current staff of part-timers. We start getting information back in, and it, there's always a couple that drop this time of year. They don't want to pick a schedule. They, they have conflicts, or they just they can't fulfill the obligation any longer. The other problem we have is we have folks currently in the academy. We don't count them until they swear in. So yeah. that final swearing in just before the summer season, I don't count them against those numbers. So the folks that are in training, if they were all to successfully complete, then they would add on to that 29. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Chief, um, you've gone from Legionnaires last year to measles this year. We got the notice from the fire department on the measles. Mm -hmm. Are, do you check and see whether Legionnaires is kind of out there, but with measles, and that's been kind of a problem this year, I guess, because a lot of people don't get the shots. Have you checked, or do you have any kind of medical records in your officers? Because you'd rather not have a measles outbreak, I assume. Well, first of all, um, medical histories on employees, we do not have access to those. Ah. Other than the ones that we perform as part of the pre-employment package. Once somebody is an employee, we do have the right uh, as the employer, if we see something that is articulable that there's a problem with an employee to request a doctor's note. Ah. And by contract, if they're out more than three days sick yeah. consecutively, we have the right to request a note from a doctor. Yeah. But as to what is ailing the particular employee, we don't have a right to that information. That's but, protected by HIPAA. But you might not want measles running wild through the department because I guess some of the younger people haven't been given measles shots. Or that is a national health crisis. The people yeah. that have chosen not to have children inoculated at a young age. Yeah. And that is going to be, we haven't experienced anything like that in Hampton. But if that trend continues where people don't get the inoculations, which is their right to do, yeah. we will see an uptick in those type of things, uh, I would believe. I just don't want half the department down with measles. I don't know if there's a whole lot, man, we can do about that other than during the pre-employment stage when we do yeah. the, we do have a right to yeah. medical histories and physicals at that particular juncture. But once they're uh, off probation and they're yeah. employees, it's very difficult to probe into yeah. health, health issues. And we're supposed to be talking about parking meters tonight, but or I guess it was, it's supposed to be the next item on the agenda. But has have you, as a department, had you're still running the, the parking, parking lots? Parking lots. Yes. Um, and I understand that some of those parking meters and stuff are a real pain, and they go down a lot and whatever. The, sta it, the state has had a number of issues with the kiosk system that they have, but we have to also remember they've had that system operating for a number of years in a very harsh marine environment. Uh -huh. I have had the opportunity to speak with the director of parking up in Portsmouth. Now, they have a yeah. separate parking authority, um, and they conduct, they do all the uh, parking lots, they also do the parking enforcement throughout the city of Portsmouth in their pay-to-pay, uh, pay-and-display areas, and also their meters. So they're more than willing when we're available yeah. to get up there. I know uh, the uh, assistant town manager and I were going to go up and have a meeting with them because they're our closest, probably most comparable entity to look at options for the town. Yeah, because I don't want to see you in the middle of the summer with screwed up meters and going crazy down there. I think we would be a little bit different that we would have a, well, with the state, I mean, they remove the kiosks, but they, they start earlier than they used to, and they don't shut down, I think, until November 1st. I don't anticipate that if we operated, uh, say, meters on our, our wetted streets, that we would have those up as, as for such a long duration. Okay. Well, we're just sitting here worrying about you, that's all. I <coughs> appreciate that. Okay, question on the report first. Um, well, not a question. So good, we haven't had any overdoses for 2019 Correct. so far. That's very good. What is the, do you know what the, uh, as far as the SOS Recovery Center going, what is the status of I have of not that? had a discussion with Mr. Burns on that recently. Uh, I know they were still very uh, eager to look at the facility where the Chamber of Commerce used to be located right, down yeah, there at yeah. 1 Lafayette Road. But I haven't spoken to Mr. Burns in several weeks, so I don't know where that stands. I can certainly inquire for you. Yeah, because I know we're having, I think in May, April, I think the Rotary had yes, that's the gonna Portsmouth be a good High School, and then May 1 of Connett's having it, correct? Correct, so that would be a great forum. if anyone has questions or, like I went to the first one in Exeter, very informative. Yeah. The governor was there, I assume, and he's going to be at all of them. I believe he's coming, and the drug czar for New Hampshire, who was uh, Dave Mara, the former chief. <laughs> 
of Manchester, and then Paul oh, Smith okay. is coming in. He's a great guy. We have a great connection with him, so I'm looking forward to going to that myself. Okay, great. And yeah. that, we have a drug czar. Is that an official title? That's the shortened title. It's he's the drug advisor to the governor. Drug addiction we advisor. Need, need to have those nowadays. <laughs> but they're reserved, referred to as the drug czar. But um, and then the other question I have is the parking meters because. I was told this was my agenda item. My agenda item was to inquire about obtaining kiosks for the municipal lot in mm -hmm. front of the in front of your police station on um, Ashworth Ave. It had nothing to do with obtaining parking meters for side streets or lighted streets. So I just want to make sure that's clear. So okay. I'll look forward to that conversation when we have it. Yeah, Thank you. And that is what was clear that we uh, are. <coughs> What was asked with Ms. Uh, Mr. Sullivan was to discuss about the kiosk okay. and not about the side streets. Okay. And it okay. was Regina's item that she asked for. Thank well, you. Know. Thank you. And I, we appreciate it. Did you have more that you wanted to comment on? No, I'm just answering questions on the quarterly, but then we have the... Uh, Okay. I filed separate reports on our plan moving forward for addressing the budget default. And then mm -hmm. you, I believe you folks wanted kind of a six month, uh, probably six year projection out capital outlay. Okay, great. So we're prepared to move forward with okay. those if you are. Perfect. Okay. Start with a six year service and capital needs assessment. That work? Mm -hmm. uh, members of the board, the first priority over the next six years in regards to sustaining the level of police service to the community is maintaining a level of excellence in our personnel particularly in the areas of recruitment and career development. It has been suggested that maybe the Hampton Police Department standards are too high and could be relaxed to allow more applicants into the department. I, I believe that the accomplishments of this department and its reputation are a direct result of our commitment to a standard of excellence. As someone who has worked in the risk management field for the last 19 years, I believe our quality is our best security and insurance as a community. The standard of excellence comes at a cost financially considering the level of assessment that is made of every applicant that receives a conditional job offer. These costs include a thorough background conducted by our staff, polygraph examination, and psychological evaluation. During my time as Deputy Chief and now Chief of Police, the Department has increased its level of training, particularly in the area of leadership. This is one of the greatest challenges to law enforcement, finding those qualified officers that are willing to step up to higher levels of responsibility and accountability and preparing them for the challenge. The level of leadership training in the Hampton Police Department is not required by, by any state or federal mandate but remains essential to maintaining a level of excellence. The department's association with organizations like the FBI, Law Enforcement Executive Development Association have been a great asset to the department's mission. Training of this nature comes at a cost to include salaries, overtime backfill, support of those trainings held at Hampton PD, tuition, travel, and lodging, to name a few. We are fortunate that some of the some costs are deferred when we are able to host training at HPD. We have been very fortunate as a department over the years to have the support of the community and access to the best equipment available to our officers. Everything from mobile, da mobile data, data terminals in each cruiser to each officer being issued and trained with a taser has helped to increase the department's effectiveness. The level of vigilance in this area must be maintained. Technology changes rapidly in law enforcement, and you see new ideas like FirstNet being deployed throughout New Hampshire. First responders around the state will be issued cellu cellular devices that have priority band access that allows them to communicate and have their location quickly identified in times they need assistance. I anticipate that in the next six year window, technology such as body cams will become a reality in Hampton. We explored this option several years ago, but the costs were prohibitive, prohibitive at that time. Items such as FirstNet and body cams, while not mandatory, will be considered industry standard. The biggest priority in price items in the need to replace our communication center consoles. These consoles were, were installed in 2005 and the department started operating out of the new headquarters facility. The consoles are reaching a level of obsolescence that they will not be able to main, be maintained by a vendor. The current anticipated cost of replacing both consoles is $250,000. Wow. Our current communication system operates over phone lines and is also considered obsolete. 
At the time of replacement of the communication consoles, we will also have to determine whether we go to an IP or microwave-based system. Optimally, we would utilize both IP and microwave for redundancy. I would also recommend that we take a town-wide approach to communications and communications moving forward. In 2016, I presented a memo to town manager Fred Welch regarding capital improvements recommendations. The memo was a collaborative effort with Fire Chief Jamie Ayotte. This collaboration was an effort to deal with communication needs in both the police and fire rescue. We should expand this effort and try and include a town-wide communications plan to effectively reduce costs, provide for vendor service efficiency, and greater interoperability between town agencies. I have included a copy of the 2016 memo for your review. With the complexities of the court system in the state of New Hampshire, the department has become one of the last few agencies to still function with a police prosecutor. The police prosecutor is now faced with dealing with all the cases generated from the agency in the district court and is now faced with the challenges and the time restraints associated with the new Felonies First program. Additionally, the state has implemented a drug court program and veterans court program. While these rising complexities and the expectations from the court, we will need to consider hiring a private attorney or partnering with the Rockingham County Attorney's Office to maintain the level of excellence that we strive to meet in all areas. The estimated cost is, is $100,000. The Hampton Police Department has been operating from its current headquarters since 2005. The facility has served our mission well, but after 14 years, there are some areas that experience wear and tear and will need to be addressed in the six-year window. Furniture and fixtures, many of the workspaces in the facility are showing extensive wear, including chairs, desks, and countertops. The training room and booking room are also showing similar wear. Many of the office walls need to have wall Wall covers replaced or painted. Many are peeling at the edges or the glue has turned to powder. Estimated cost, $60,000. AC condensing coil, the system while still operable is reaching obsolescence. A new unit would be more energy efficient and operate on a coolant that is environmentally friendly. Estimated cost, $75,000. HVAC building controls, the system is reaching obsolescence and in need of frequent failure. It, frequent failure. These failures have created hot spots and cold spots in various parts of the facility. Estimated cost twenty thousand dollars. Uh, we'll take any questions on the six-year old way. I wonder you didn't want to read all that, Mrs. Wolseley. Did you want to comment? Um, does it occur to you, gentlemen, that you probably should have bought some technology stock if it's going to cost, what, a quarter of a million dollars to replace some of that? The unfortunate part with law enforcement is we have become so reliant upon the technology. Oh, yeah. When we talked to the younger officers and we said our, our mobile data terminal was an aluminum tin that we used to write on. That's what we had back in the 80s and the 90s. But again, it's not industry standard. And in the, to try to keep up competitively in all areas, including yeah. recruitment and retention of employees, they kind of spoiled. They expect to have the best of equipment, and I, I don't blame them. Uh, and one of those things is there's designed obsolescence. Um, remember years ago, we instituted a program that when we replaced the cruiser, we also replaced the mobile data terminal. And it is by the time we get ready to replace the cruiser, yeah. a three-year window, usually three to four-year window, that mobile data terminal is hard to maintain because yeah. designed obsolescence. It's just one of those things we're going to be faced with communication-wise, and that's why we've recommended uh, maybe some of the communication needs can be bundled together and save the town some money if we went to a town-wide communications net and system. Mm. Um, just technology is going to demand it. So. Yeah, it's going pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. I have one quick question for you. The school resource officer, I understand that one uh, officer did go on a uh, trip to Washington, I think it was, with the um, center school. What, how do you um, compensate that officer? You've, that's a whole separate um, assignment, right? If, you're, if an officer is on the road with the class. If an officer travels down with, in, with a school trip somewhere, a lot yeah. of, it started back in the day when Tom Lane used to go to the environmental camps. Yeah. Uh, and that can, has continued and it's expanded. So yeah. they're paid for their eight-hour day. If there's any, you know, articulable overtime, but they're pretty, 
You'll find the school resources are pretty generous with us as to what they actually put in for. Yeah. Um, but that's part of the package that we, you know, we do compensate them mm -hmm. for that time. Um, what about transportation or, I mean, do they have to incur extra like no, lodging it, it, or transportation? No, if they're going with the school, the school provides for the Just transportation and the lodging if, it, if it's an okay. overnight type of thing. And then the SRO replacement, which I assume you put a replacement if the we do. regular, um, does that come out of the school budget or? No, that's one what we incur when we do have an officer that's, that's out uh, on sick time vacation or traveling with the school. Yeah. We do try to have an officer there if we can find somebody that's willing to go in and spend the day uh, in the school. Uh, so it's sort of a double expense, basically. You're compensating the officer on the road, which you should. Yeah, any time, well, we'll look at it this way. Any time there's an officer absent from their normal duties, yeah. we're paying the officer and he's not there. Mm -hmm. And if it's required, we have to do that overtime backfill. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to if an officer was missing yeah. from patrol. We, we try to fill those gaps where we can. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Regina? Yep, so the six years, so this is what you project you need the most for the next six those years. Those are my priorities. <laughs> there's, there's, there's more in there, uh, but I've, I looked at those as being the priorities that we're, mm -hmm. the big yeah. ticket items. Well, I think communications there is definitely oh, yeah. top for you guys, and I think that if we can consolidate it for the whole town, because I know some of the stuff, you know, I've, I work on a lot of different types of emails. I have about ten different mm -hmm. kinds of emails, and the technology in the town is definitely, oh, I'm sorry, I would call it dinosaur software. So, I use the word obsolete, but. <laughs> so if we can somehow like the latch on to what Mary the police and the fire department, it. because I know yeah. it's very important for you guys to obviously have yeah. the, the best when it comes to that. I think that's a great idea, and I give you a lot of credit for putting that together. Appreciate Thank it. you. And explaining it in that memo. Thank, Thank you. you. She didn't call you a dinosaur. Though. Oh, I am. I know that. No. Dinosaur <laughs> software. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the report. And I, I think the, uh, the CIP is good. I think uh, capital needs are, are, you know, right up there. And I, th I think, you know, the, the first priority you say talk about is the level of police service and, and the bar you set very high for your police force. And I think it should be kept there. And I think you do a great job at that. And I think the town should support you because you do super. I think the, uh, you know, we. I can't complain about the support we get in this town for, for uh, the police department, but it's one of these things. There's only so much money to go around, and, and we respect that, and we will always endeavor to make the best use of the funding we get. So, I think the it, last item we have is, is our. Is there somebody? Oh, yeah. Is there somebody from the police department that takes uh, uh, that works with the C capital improvement? It would depend on what area comes in. So a lot of the big money items we're talking about have to do with the communications in the facility. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, Lieutenant Tom, the guy, the, the, excuse me, Gaditis. Tommy uh, does a lot of work throughout the town. He's uh, assisted the fire department with setting up communications. Uh, so he will probably be our go-to guy as we progress. But that also depends on how long Tommy decides. He's kind of like Danny, me, you know, mm -hmm. we're 30 year plus. Mm -hmm. in the system that at some point we're going to have to be prepared to replace his knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. So right now he would be the person we would turn to if we were able to come up with $250,000 in the next year, Tommy would be leading that project. By, by Now, is uh, how often is the CIP meeting now, Mr. Welch? They're meeting annually, Mr. Chairman. Just once a year? Well, it depends on how the, the, when the planning board calls the meeting together, the yeah. chairman from the planning board. Yeah, I think that you should make sure that you have someone there if you're looking to get those type of things on there because the idea of it is that it's supposed to be working for the next right. three years at least. Um, so it would seem to me that it would be, be good to have somebody there when it I'll does be work. honest with you, I don't have any experience. We've, uh, we've never actually utilized because... Unlike the police, unlike the fire department and public works, we don't have any big ticket items usually. Usually it's the, the crews are changeovers and those type of things, and we look at those more as annual costs as opposed to those CIP projects. But I'll compliment the board asking for this from us because mm -hmm. it had been one of those things that we were probably deficient in projecting out. And, you know, mm -hmm. and the problem with projections is based on the will of the voters, mm -hmm. is that money going to be there or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are we going to be able to accomplish this? So I think that's one of those things historically that's been shied away from, particularly in the police department. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good thing to take another look at it and see if we can make some movement and some inroads yeah. mm -hmm. to accomplish these items because they're going to need to be done whether they, they come from a CIP 
or a budget, it, it's, these are not items that we can just say, eh, you know, we're just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. We have to have radio, uh, radio system that operates so we can get our officers to the yeah. places where people need us. And if that system fails, mm -hmm. we're going to have no choice. We're going to have to come up with 250000 to replace it because the ability to patch that. So do you put it's that minimal. in your, something like that in your budget? Well, we could. We will probably have to have a discussion like that. If if it's not going to be something we can do through CIP, then we're going to have to consider a warrant article yeah. or putting it in the budget. But think about considering the last two years we've had. If there was a two hundred fifty thousand dollar item in my budget that was new, mm. I don't know how well the budget committee is going to receive that. Yeah. So no, I don't know if that would get off the ground. Yeah. We'd have to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mr. Welch, is there a limit on the uh, or of dollar value for the CIP at this point? Not from the CIP that we submit for the selectmen. Mm -hmm. The planning board, I believe, <laughs> considers seventy-five thousand dollars to be the minimum mm -hmm. to get, to make it into the program. But we have items that are less than that that yeah. we have to have separate warrant articles for. Yeah, because I think by if it's. $75,000 or more, I would suggest that you definitely put it in there because it yeah. gets the conversation rolling and, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know, people keep saying, well, I never heard about this, I never heard about that. You heard that tonight and it's talked about all the time. I'll so have other discussions with the yeah, manager. The more it's brought up, the better it might yeah. work. Okay. Whatever he's presented will go into your budget for your consideration for mm -hmm. yeah. long-range capital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regina? I have a question now that we're talking about this, because I believe we're also planning on having the fire department do a similar type of thing when they come yes, in for their... Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. After we do that, that will be the third, because I know we have Public Works. Would it be possible that we maybe contact the planning board and ask them when they would be considering doing this? Because I know I've been on the CIP as a selectman's rep, I believe, my whole selectman life, and I've yet to go to a meeting. So, And there was one, and then it got canceled, and it never got rescheduled. Mm -hmm. So I would like to actually be definite that we're going to have a CIP meeting. And then, I mean, if you guys, we could say that we've heard all our CIPs from our major departments and, you know, maybe we don't need all of them to go, but we could, you know, say maybe. they've come to the Board of Selectmen and can you please include this as part of your Maybe we should process. write a letter to the uh, planning board and ask when the next CIP meeting is going to be so that we know. It probably will not be till fall. They normally yeah. don't hold those meetings until after school, but it goes back in session in the fall. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We do an average of 250 page report to the planning board on the uh, mm -hmm. items submitted by budgets underneath the selectmen's control. Uh, so you'll get that uh, probably sometime in the beginning of June. And you'll, you'll have the privilege of going through it, obviously, and approving what you think needs to be approved. It will then be submitted to the planning board. They normally do not have their meetings until sometime after school starts, which is usually October. And uh, their report isn't usually issued until January or February, yeah. which is, I think, a little late for the budget committee to have a consideration. Yeah, I think it's gone where they didn't even meet in a year. That could be. Yeah, so we, we need to really tighten that up. Thank you. Did you want to continue? Uh, the next item we have is going to be the department's response to the two, uh, 2019 default budget. Despite the failure of the proposed budget to pass at town meeting, I believe the Hampton Police Department will be able to stay within the default with little impact upon operations. The difference between the proposed and default budgets amounted to 6700 $17 within the police department. The following measures will be taken to ensure the continui continuity of police services to the community. Currently, the department remains at minimum manning and staffing requests over minimum manning require command staff approval. This will remain in effect until such time weather and or events dictate. Some of the difference will be made up by the retirement of a senior officer in February who was at the highest step for a patrolman. The new officer hired as a replacement is that starting step, which is over 17,000 below the top step. There are several other potential retirements that may occur this year, which have a similar effect on salary lines in the budget. Each year, the department appoints summer corporals to assist with the increased need for supervision during the summer months. Over the last three summers, the department has utilized three corporals. The officers that are appointed to these positions are chosen for their experience and demonstrated leadership abilities and are moved to the starting sergeant's pay rate during their assignment as corporal. In consideration of the default budget, I have determined that only two corporal positions will be filled for the 2019 summer season. During the course of the year, if the police department's budget <clears throat> or the overall town budget are in jeopardy of exceeding appropriations, I am prepared to recommend to the board 
that the three cruises and cruiser setups be removed from the budget and purchased utilizing the Fund 26, the private detail fund. With the ever-increasing infrastructure we are experiencing and the constant request for police services at privately funded events, this fund is healthy and could sustain these purchases. I would rec recommend this be used as a last option as this fund has helped with unanticipated, when unanticipated needs arise. Mm -hmm. Questions, Mrs. Wolsey? I guess a comment. I remember a couple of years ago, Chief, that you were, um, well, not exactly complaining, but you were saying that you were stuck in your office in the middle of July, sweating it out while you were trying to do the next year's budget. Since your deadline is the end of June this year, will that make it a little easier for you on the budgeting? No, I want to complain again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <Gina. laughs> Uh, you also have my release? Yeah. I just wanted to point out one thing about your memo. I couldn't resist. You said that you're gonna we're gonna recognize a salary savings, I guess, of seventeen thousand dollars because you know, one of mm -hmm. of retirement of a senior officer. But, you know, sometimes with the police I know losing all these guys and it seems like a lot of them have left. We we lose a lot when the uh, you know the experience counts. Experience yeah. has yeah. left and I just wanna say that I feel that when they can come back, if they're willing to on a part-time basis, it's definitely a benefit to the town, and I know you had mentioned that. It, it, it's very that rare that somebody doesn't. Um, uh, I think one of the, the great things about the Hampton Police Department is that sense of a team, that even when they retire, they want to stay on. Right. Um, and that, that's a, a tribute to the esprit de corps of, of that agency that's existed long before I got there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just do everything we can to enhance it. This is, you know, it's, I think a lot of people are motivated by being there to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. Uh, but I think when people talk about Hampton PD and the, the people we meet that have, uh, we just had another one of our uh, part-time officers just got appointed as the uh, chief of police in Steve Scoring. Uh, one of our part-timers that I started with just became a, a chief down in Massachusetts. Uh, the community will come to me, but we see things like that and it just tells us the program we're running yeah. and what we do here is meaningful um, and I think that really makes people want to be part of this team so I'm proud of that Good. yeah I think so too it's pretty much gone on for as long as I can remember right. so and I have one question can you tell me what ESGR means so that I can write it out the award that you got employer support guard reserves oh, yeah. employer support guard reserves <coughs> okay thank you and thank you. Is more there more? I think we have a couple of other Double items on the agenda <laughs> while we're sitting here with you. Uh, a little bit quicker. Yeah, it should be quicker. I'm sorry, my eyes are going too. Oh, okay. So acceptance of donation from Crime Line for the Hamptons up to seven hundred dollars for flashlight replacement and one thousand eight hundred dollars for training on first amendment summit so we, we would need a motion to accept that i'll so move to accept second all those in favor unanimous acceptance of donation from u.s probation and parole of 17 glock 22 pistols yeah. slightly used and additional magazines valued at approximately five thousand dollars actually the retail value exceeds eight thousand but we use that police price that we get um, I'm going to give Lieutenant uh, Gaditis kudos on this one. He stays up to date on all the, the network sites, and this came up as an opportunity, and we put in for it, and we were fortunate enough to get 17 pistols for no cost. If Great. you decide I'll to so move that we accept. I'll second. All those in favor, unanimous. Um, reach the beach use of Ashworth parking lot. Um, <laughs> with the transfer of the parking lots to... The control of the police chief and the police department this issue has come up they have had their annual event um, yeah. and they have put in for the uh, board to allow them to use the lot I'm recommending that we allow them to use the lot but it shouldn't be for free ah. it's a lot that we we have that derives revenue yeah. um, I ask that you allow us to negotiate with them either mm -hmm. we either have somebody in the lot taking yep. money like we normally do or come up with a flat fee that they would pay for the use of the lot. But I don't feel, um, 
you know, my belief is one of the things we need to pursue more is the available revenues to the town that mm -hmm. exist down there at the beach as yeah. we accommodate and expand for these events. And <coughs> let's face it, we hear from our citizens of mm. the inconvenience. I think one way yeah. to, yeah. to dampen that is to <laughs> collect the revenue that we should be collecting for the use of our properties. So do you feel like the flat fee could be abused? I, no, I think the flat fee would actually work better. That way I don't have to staff it. Yeah. And we just collect the check from the event coordinator, and then they Good. can put in the vehicles they want to put in. Um, I've talked to Lieutenant Gilly about what we average on a busy weekend when the lot yeah. is full, and we'll come up with a number that, you know, I don't want to scare them away. We'll, we'll take a little bit off. I'll come up with a number. I'll present it to the manager, and if it's yeah. approved, allow the manager to approve my negotiation and do a flat fee, and I think that would just mm -hmm. work for all parties involved. And so see. when what what is the time for that? It's just for that uh, Sunday? Reach the Beaches um, the, on the October second, Third weekend in September. September. Uh, and it's Saturday. And that's still real close to that season, so mm -hmm. I don't I don't feel like we're trying to gouge people for an event in January. But it is just a one-day event. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, Good. so do we need a motion for that? I believe you need a motion to authorize me to negotiate I'll make a motion that he. I'll be second to Mr. Wardell. All those yeah. in favor? I agree, but I have a question about Reach the Beach. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a general question about. Now, I support the road races. I know a lot what you're saying yeah. that a lot of residents get inconvenienced. Would this maybe prevent some people from parking like all over the place because they would have a. <laughs> I, I honestly don't think it's going to impact it at all because if you go down there, that lot is full. Every yeah. year we've had that event. That law fills up because remember, a lot of these people have those big vans. You you cannot rent right, a sixteen yeah. passenger van in New England the week we get into mm -hmm. that event. They yeah. were all coming down from the mountain, and they all wind up in the lot in front of the police department. So it's going to be full <laughs> whether we charge them or we don't. So I don't think it's going to impact that on the parking issue. It just seems like the past couple ones that I've gone down to and rode bicycles, cars, motorcycles through that now the people are like running all over the place whereas before they were like sort of staying on one yeah. side <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I know that like there was an incident like down on the bridge and I don't know whether it's what, whose fault it was at one of the races but I just feel like I don't know do you think that it's a little bit different the people that are participating that they're not I think it's more of them I think, is that what, I think what we're experiencing is we've demonstrated that you can come to Hampton right. and run a safe event. Mm -hmm. So people are always, you know, when I get the complaints from people about the events and the inconvenience side, I'm very clear with them. <coughs> it's one day. When I approve an event as the police chief, right. I'm approving it based on a safety perspective. The inconvenience aspect is the political aspect that you folks have to decide whether mm -hmm. the town should commit to that or not. The fire chief and I, we can look at an event, we can come up with a plan, mm -hmm. that, and I think we have a great track record of safety uh, at all of our events. As to inconvenience, that that's hard to manage. There's got I don't care how we change courses, there is somebody in the community we're going to inconvenience with an event. Mm -hmm. But that's an issue I think that needs to be addressed by the political body as opposed to the appointed police chief. Yeah, I don't care about yeah. the political. I just as long as you think that they're all still going the way they should. They are. They're just expanding. They are definitely. Okay. These events are definitely expanding in the town. Okay. All right. I Thank know. You. Being involved with Reach the mm -hmm. Beach, that they run a, a, a tight, tight ship. Tight ship. They and they disqualify people right away if they've done yep. something incorrectly. Yep. So they're, they're pretty tight. You're okay uh, as long as they don't all end up in the police station. Honestly, with the volume of events we have, you would think we would be more active in that area, and we're just not. It, it, I think right. it attracts good people. They spend money in the community. But the more people you, you bring into the inn, the more crowded it's going to be, and we just have to contend with that. So speaking of um, bringing more money into the community, the people aren't going to be staying overnight in those vans in the town parking lot. No, there's no, no, there's no sweeping allowed in the town parking lots. Mm -hmm. Most of those people come in uh, because they're in teams and they're relay. So mm -hmm. if you're in the last wave, you're going to be running into town. But if you're from the relay before... Yeah. You may have already gotten a hotel room. You may be staying in the, in the community somewhere, but no, there's no overnight camping in our water Good. Okay. And they, they've just finished a 24-hour yeah. race, so yeah. mm -hmm. they're looking for comfort. Yeah, basically what happens is at the end of the race, they wind up down at the state park. They have a great party, but by that afternoon, they've exited, and it's over. Yeah. We're just the end of the race, which yeah. is fortunate. Well, thank you for your oh, report. We appreciate it. We do have, uh, what else do we have? We have a purchasing policy waiver for cruiser outfitting. I'm going to let the deputy handle that. Department's requesting approval for a waiver of the purchasing policy in order to outfit three police cruisers. One of the cruisers 
includes a complete outfit of new equipment due to the increase in the number of vehicles in the fleet to accommodate the addition of 2018's new SRO. The cost for the equipment including installation is $14,106.20. We are also transferring equipment over from two older cruises to two of the new, two of the new cruises. The cost of the transfer of two cruises is $7,000. $590.70. These cruises were all purchased under the 2018 budget, however the delivery of the cruises had not occurred until 2019. The total cost to outfit all three cruises is $21,696.90. The department has, a, has had a strong relationship with the Adamson Industries for over 25 years. During this time period, the department used a different vendor one time and we were less than satisfied with the level of service and quality we received and resorted back to Adamson's the following year. Adamson Industries, Industries has also complied with the bidding process and they warranty their labor for the life of the vehicle for the original owner. Other vendors that have previously bid on this work are 65 and 81 miles away. This adds to the overall cost significantly when you factor travel time for two offices anytime repairs are needed and for initial delivery and pickup. We have been satisfied with the quality of work of Ad Adamson Industries over the years and would, like to remain and would like to maintain the relationship we have with this vendor. We are confident that the level of pricing is competitive with other vendors <coughs> and when there is equipment that needs to be repaired or replaced, Adamson Industries is approximately 30 minutes away and does not require a drain on our resources, resources that other vendors would. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, I will so move item E on the Chief Sawyer's uh, report here, purchasing policy waivers for three police cruisers outfitting. I'll second it. All those in favor, unanimous. And that's all we have. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Thank for coming in, and congratulations. Yeah. Um, <coughs> now we have the town manager's report. And Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, as I think everybody has mentioned a couple of times tonight, there's been a change in the town clerk's office hours, effective April 15th. The clerk will now be open Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., on Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and on Fridays from 8 a.m. to 1 to 11:30 a.m. Mm. The State Department of Transportation will be paving Route 1A from the Massachusetts border north. And this says to Cusack Road, but the latest information I have is that that may not go quite that far. But uh. on or about May 24th, I'll make the, as my way in this evening, I noticed that the, uh, they're getting ready to grind Route 1A oh. and cut down the, the material by at least an inch and a half on the roadway. Mm. And that the grinding machines, uh, the planing machines, are actually in the state parking lot at the, uh, the state park. So they should be starting very quickly this week. Yeah, the sign says uh, April 23rd. Yeah. Tomorrow. So, tomorrow, yeah. Mm. So that they've got the equipment here. They're getting ready to use it, and they're getting ready to do something with it. Um, additionally, Route 1 will be paved from the Ham Hampton, just north of the Hampton, um, uh, Northampton town line to uh, south of Route 33 in Greenland. So there's gonna be a lot of paving going on. Wow. Um, and the Mass DOT has notified us that engineering and design work, as well as paving of Route 1A in Salisbury is going to happen at the same time. So it's gonna be kind of confusing. And then to add to the goodwill of the, all that paving, the state is going to pave the bridge <coughs> sections on Exeter Road, uh, where Hampton, uh, where Exeter Road crosses 101 and I-95. That's going to take place at the same time as well. So there's going, to, there's going to be a lot of confusion as to what's going on and where. And people are going to have to watch where they go and why. Mm. Very important. Uh, as part of the Route 1 paving work, New Hampshire DOT is also planning on sidewalk work on Route 1A, on their sidewalks, on both sides of 1A, from Hampton, uh, from Epping Avenue, north to Cusack Road and south from Cusack Road to Nutt Avenue. They're going to be putting in the uh, ADA requirements for sloped areas at, at the entrance to streets and ADA uh, domed um, pads so that people who with ADA uh, visibility compliance mm. are going to know they're going on to a street area. So they're going to be doing a lot of work on all the cross streets all the way up and down the beach. Um, 
Unitel has provided us notice that on April 30th from 8.30 a.m. for one and a half hours, the power would be off in Hampton. Now, we went and started checking on this, and what we found was that uh, uh, it won't be off for the whole town. It's going to be off for areas they're working on. We were told that that's C to G streets at the beach, uh. and then in the, uh, over on Brown Avenue near the fire station, uh, they're replacing transformers down the beach. Hmm. So the time and duration of power outages is going to vary from time to time, depending on how long it takes them to actually trans or change those transformers. Hmm. But that's important. They're trying to upgrade the electrical systems down the beach so that when we get to summer, there won't be any yeah, more good. brown downs or, or, or yeah. blowouts, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, we want to let everybody know that uh, Cassie Levitt, um, a dispatcher for the Hampton Fire Department has been named the Telecommunicator of the Year for the New Hampshire Emergency Dispatchers Association, which is the highest honor they, they give for mm -hmm. dispatchers uh, in New Hampshire. And that's a great, great honor for, for Cassie and, and, mm -hmm. and for the fire department. And, and, and well, I won't mention her father who sits and over for her dad yeah. on vacation. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, he certainly is tickled pink because he... Uh, yeah. He, uh, he popped the buttons off his shirt when he found out about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a few other things, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've been asked by the, the United States uh, Census if we would like to participate uh, with the Census in, in uh, one of their Census programs, a new construction program. The program provides that, um, in this case, local governments have an opportunity to update the Census Bureau residential address list with living quarters for which construction is in progress uh, before March 1, 2018, and completion is expected by consensus, Census Day on April 1, 2020. Uh, we don't do a census locally as a right. municipality here. Uh, Massachusetts does in each one of their cities and towns, but we don't. Mm. So this would be a very difficult program for us to participate in. Yeah. Um, it would involve getting involved with realtors and buildings of buildings and, and people they're, they're selling to in order to get that information. Mm. That would be a very labor-intensive activity for us. So yeah. I'd recommend you don't do that. I agree. Um, we talked about paving. Uh, the household has this waste day <coughs> scheduled for, excuse me, <coughs> June 1, 2019 and Saturday, August 24th, 2019. Yeah. We will have the two collections this year. Good. As was advertised at town meeting and approved by town meeting. And uh, the information is already up on the website. Please go and look at it. There's also instructions on how and what to bring and how to bring it when the paint has to come in a certain way, etc. cetera. Uh, so there's a lot of information out there that you need to read before you come so that your yeah. visit will be quick and you can leave. It's very important that you do that. Good. Um, those people who live on Ann's Lane and those people who use Ann's Lane should be noticing that the Public Works Department is out there <laughs> uh, dealing with utility yeah. structures, principally uh, yeah. uh, manholes and, and drains and so on and so forth, and they're adding a few drains to take care of some of the water problems out there on the side of the road. So that's going on now. Uh, paving was, is going to be within the next week after they get all those uh, structures fitted and, 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 and corrected. So that's very, very important as well. Uh, I noticed that earlier we talked about measles. Yeah, we did get an advisory from the uh, EMS officer of the fire department. Yeah. Uh, please take any precautions that are necessary. It's a highly contagious disease and uh, it is spreading like wildfire through the United States. Mm. I noticed this morning on the, on the news uh, that I was ta taking a look at quickly that uh, we are already exceeding the last 24 years worth of measles outbreaks in the United mm -hmm. States. So yeah. uh, it, it's pretty serious. Uh, also, we have a, an outbreak of hepatitis A. So you need to be careful in that area as well. Wow. Uh, and that information is up on the state website for any person who wants to actually take a look at it and, and uh, figure out exactly what's going on. Aerosource is doing helicopter surveillance of their power lines in town. This has been going on now for some weeks. They're also using uh, drones. Um, they're also doing some repair work by helicopter, I understand, on some of the power lines. So if you hear a helicopter hovering around and you happen to live near a power line, that's probably what they're doing. Uh, they want to make okay. sure everything's okay for the summer season when we have our big power push. 
That's good. Um, I just wanted to tell folks who live over on the Stratum side of town, uh, there have been PFOs, PFASs, uh, PFOs, mm -hmm. or, uh, as yeah. they have been known, um, uh, because of the landfill up at, uh, up at, um, yeah, up in, uh, I can't Coakley, Coakley, Coakley landfill, yeah. thank you. Uh, they have also found an outbreak of that material in stratum. Wonderful. And it's believed that the outbreak, outbreak, they don't know for sure, but the outbreak is a response is into uh, some contamination released by the fire department over there, probably using some chemicals. Ooh. I have one more thing, Mr. Chairman. Because the state is, in fact, doing Route 1A, um, the Public Works Department has asked me to have you approve two purchase orders uh, on an emergency basis. We need to replace uh, the drains for the sewer plant. Uh, we have... Uh, Replacing 67 of those that we currently have in stock wow. uh, will cost us $26,800, and we need 17 more for an additional cost of $10,996. This money is available within the Public Works budget in the uh, sewer department uh, maintenance section. So I need board's approval to sign these purchase orders. Uh, we are using the PAMREX covers that we have used before because Route 1A is a, an area where we get flooding, yeah. and uh, that flooding is de deteriorates our existing type manhole covers. These are waterproof covers. They will not take water into the sewer system. Yeah. And yeah. Where, where, where are they exactly? Uh, this runs the, the whole gamut from the bridge all the way down to um, the end of the paving area, which is gonna be down in Dumas Avenue. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we need to replace all those. We have most of them in hand. We have 67 in hand, but we need an additional 17 that we do not have. Okay. Do we have a motion? I have questions yeah, uh, I have before a question I too. vote on anything. Uh, these are the lockdown covers, Fred? Yes. Okay. And when in conjunction with the sidewalk um, renovation, and I remember a, a nice lady tripped over one of those loose covers last year. Is this going to be... No, those are state covers. These, this has nothing to do <laughs> those with Those are covers state. that this actually were town. in the sidewalks. These are in the driven these areas are of the roads. The lockdown in the road, so right. you don't have all the flooding all over. Good, yes. very good. I'll so move that we approve that. These are, what does this have to do with 1A? All these covers have to be raised and replaced. Yep. The ones that we have there now take in water when the road yep. floods. Yep. Uh, they're because they're not they're not PAMREX covered. Because they're the not waterproof. Because the state's going to pave one A at night in the middle in the middle of the summertime. Yep. Okay. Yep. And we have to raise them, or they will raise them and charge us for them. Right. The only and thing. They, then be, there'll be the old covers which do not keep the uh, water out of the yes. sewer system. So this is taking about thirty-seven thousand dollars out of our public works budget. Yeah. That's correct. With that no they notice. Just, that they just. Uh, this sliced been, by about $188,000, yeah. including closing the transfer station yeah. on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So I have a problem saying yes to this. What about, um, so how are they going to you know, differ differentiate uh, which drains are supposed to be draining into the marsh? I can't answer that well, question there because, of them. because they're, all, they're all state drains that, that drain into the marsh. Yeah. And uh, I don't think they're handling any of those. My understanding is that the paving is only going to occur between the white line and the, and the, and the travel light mm -hmm. line, which is the yellow line. Yes. They're not going to pave inside the white line. What, what do you mean the white line? These the fog lines that's the on the side of the road. Yeah. And most of those drain covers are on the inside of that fog mm -hmm. line. They're only going to plane out the portion that's in the center, an inch and a half deep, and fill it with asphalt. Yeah. So that's all that they're doing. That's what they're doing, but unfortunately, all of our manhole covers yeah. are in that area. Yeah. So <laughs> we have the opportunity to uh, to seal those covers now, which should be done, or to allow them to continue to put um, salt water into our existing yeah. sewer system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be doing an orderly replacement of those all along. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to get the state's permission. 
And of course, they're forcing us to do it now. You know what I think about the state's permission? Yeah, I mean, they will they will raise the existing covers and not do this. Yeah. And we will continue to take the water in the in the sources. Yeah. System. No, we. It'll cost us money in the long run. Oh yes. And because we'll have to go out and do the whole thing rather than yeah. than yeah. yeah. Okay. Which will cost us probably well over a hundred thousand right. dollars. Okay. There's a motion. I'll Again, that's crazy. it doesn't have anything to do with the. Uh, the drains that take water off the street and no, I wish marsh. it did because I'd love to get those fixed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have a motion. I'll second and a second. It. All those in favor? Opposed. What are you Abstain. doing? Abstain. Abstaining. So we have three and one abstention and one person not here. That's the point. Questions for the town manager's report. I have questions. Oh, yeah, just real quick. I really appreciate the um, the memo on the Anne's Lane drainage being aware of the, the drainage and accommodating some of that as they get that street prepared. Thank so you. I say thank you to Public Works for that. And Regina? Yes, yeah, so the Department of Transportation is going to be doing 1A. I believe it's midnight to 6 a.m. It's going to be the summertime schedule. I think that's what I saw sometime. I, I think that's part of their schedule, but I think <laughs> I, I don't think that's all of it because they're going up until Memorial Day. Uh, they're going to be doing it during the daytime, some of, it, some of that work. And that looks like Ooh. it's going to extend all the way through to Salisbury. Wow. And um, Yes, yes, it's going to be a mess. You <laughs> notice that the... Uh, now, I'm... I was, I'm assuming, town manager, that the reason why it would be so hard for us to join this U.S. Census Bureau is because the state of New Hampshire does not allow us as yeah. a municipality to be a part of it. But I just want to say that the program includes uh, the federal government allocates over $675 billion in federal funds annually for infrastructure programs and service based on the Census Bureau data. But unfortunately, yeah. we're not in Massachusetts, so we can't participate. <laughs> If That's we did all participate, all the money would have to go through the state of New Hampshire and not to us. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, because they get their cut. That would be, yeah, yes. exactly. And Thank you. Mr. Waddell. I'm set. Yeah. yeah, so as I understand it, what's being done in Salisbury has nothing to do with what's happening. No, it's just Hampshire. a giant it's, continuation yeah. of 1A. It's, it's nothing. Right. It's not at all connected. Yeah. No. No, they're going to they're going to join the two roads together, but yeah. they're separate states. I just want to point out to people that, yeah. in fact, this is going to be a bigger area, yeah. depending on where they go. So at least they have some notice mm -hmm. something's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, that road in Salisbury, North End Avenue, is horrendous. Yeah. No, it's past horrendous. I've been yeah. down it a couple uh, of times recently. Did, I almost killed the person that was driving my car that hit one of those potholes. It was unbelievable. Oh, they're just unbelievable. Yeah. So they've got it much worse than, and it's been bad there. It's like going on a both. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Last three or four years. Yeah, I think it's probably one of the few roads I've driven on recently where you can actually feel like you're getting seasick if you're going too yeah. fast. It's one so. of the few roads that are worse than Winnicott. Yeah. Um, moving on to old business. Um, I have some old business that I want to discuss. Um, so, as we get ready to set up um, this committee, don't Shouldn't we have someone like maybe uh, Jamie Sullivan that uh, handles this for the board? That's up to the board. Yeah, I think it's something that we have to discuss. We have two, um, like for instance, the next meeting is in two weeks. So maybe Jamie could work on it for the next couple of weeks, decide which people are going to be, you know, First of all, I think we should have everybody that wants to be part of it. Like I said, it doesn't matter if they live in a house and they're not part of this. They sh it's still their taxes that they're paying. Mm -hmm. It should be something that's fair to all. So I think we should let everyone <coughs> be part of it. And what has to be determined is who from what departments and uh, when the meetings would be. So we have to, I think, I'd like to see that when the next two weeks come, that we can give people an idea, is it gonna be a monthly meeting or whatever, it, you know, yeah. uh, at least establish some guidelines and then once the committee starts, they can set up their own guidelines. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna to have to, at one point, ask for people to, you know, put their name forward. And um, I so I- I think you're kinda of doing that now. Yeah, 
Well, I think that we should have, I get, it would either, to me, it makes sense that it would either be Public Works or Jamie, but I think that Public Works is gonna be involved in it anyway, and they've already done a lot of their information that they've given us. So I think that this would be a good thing for Jamie to do. Do we have, what do you think, Jamie? I agree. Yeah, I so agree. we have a consensus um, that we'll do that. And then after that, we could give people two weeks to support, to put their name in and offer their support of how they'd like to be part of the committee. So that brings us up until, um, I think, May Second 20th. Second meeting in May, yeah. Yeah, where we could actually get the committee going. And um, then it, November 1st would be, you know, a six-month period. Everyone will have time to think about it. Mm -hmm. And we can, uh, if it has to be another two weeks or something like that, we can do it. Uh, but it will get the ball rolling. So we have a consensus that we're going to, and I'll stop in and talk with Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody else can stop in and talk and say what, you know, what the, everyone could give their opinions. Um, and uh, have him maybe here at the meeting in two weeks, uh, you know, to, to discuss this and invite people to be part of yep. it. And then we'll, after the following two weeks, we'll have the whole thing set up and ready to go. Mrs. Wolseley? Look at the clock. This is a board that wants to meet every other week. Look at that. Look at that. Your point? We have, we have business up to our eyeballs. We're going to take every other Monday off. That's not what we're talking that about right foolish. now. That is foolish. Um, that is absolutely foolish. Okay. Uh, does anyone feel that we need a special meeting before those May 6th and May 14th, I mean uh, May 20th? So Rusty's not here tonight. So I think that's the best we can do for that right now. Um, and the other part of old business I'd like to discuss it, what about the Committee for the Heritage Commission? The you need to authorize us to go ahead and advertise. We, we already have one application. Yeah. And, and I think that's good. Uh, the committee is five, one member from the Board of Selectmen, one member from the Planning Board, and mm -hmm. three people from the community. So is it okay with everyone else uh, that, do we have a consensus that Jamie can discuss this commission also when he's here next week or in two weeks? I'm by me, yeah. Yeah. So we have a consensus to that. Well, you may not have um, a total consensus. Well, a consensus I, I is like three me. of whatever, yeah, and we got the good. three. Yeah. Um, and um, we do, like uh, Mr. Welch said, we have a uh, fine applicant that's put their name forward, and uh, so we'll deal with that and maybe put the same time frame on it where there's a two-week uh, yeah. advertising or whatever, however you want to put it. Other people that have old business, Mrs. Walsley? I'm businessed out. Regina? Just one quick thing. I wanted to fix something I said about when I talked about the public works budget last week, I didn't consider that the $124,000 was part of the default budget for the Mack trucks that we leased. But I do want to reiterate that the public works memo that they represented they had cut $218,000 out of it in reductions, and then they recommended toward this board, and we approved an additional 75496 So they have taken $293,496 from their budget to deal with the default, to address the default budget voted on by the town. So I just wanted to fix my number right there. So there you Mr. go. Mr. Rodell. Old business, no. Um, okay. Uh, new business, we've already dealt with number two. Number one is contract for annual audit with Plaza and We did that Sanderson too. And that we too. did that too. So yeah. really any other new business, Mrs. Wolseley? Motion to adjourn that. Uh, well, I, do we have comments? Yeah, yeah oh. we have, we got some more stuff going on here. Oh, okay. Regina, did you have any new business? I don't have any new business. Though. And did you have no, new business? No, new business. Okay. We yeah. have comments though at the end uh, of the meeting? Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a comment that I, uh, that somebody got up and spoke at uh, public speaking time, and I would say, from my opinion, they were 100% wrong. They made disparaging mar remarks about the assistant town manager, made disparaging mar remarks, innuendos about members of this board, 
about members of this board not taking their job seriously, doing something because they were friendly with somebody and not because they felt the person could do the best job for the town. I think that's 100% wrong. And I think the contracts that were entered into, they were entered into in uh, fair uh, negotiations by both sides and they stand. And I think that person has caused problems before on boards, problems here before, wanted to bring the board to court at one time, and that person I have no respect for. Okay. Anyone else um, have any uh, closing comments? I would like to say uh, a little different from what Jim just said, but, um, and it's nice to have all those people come that comment, um, but there are many, uh, and I appreciate all their comments, but many of the things that people said actually aren't the way that it really is. And, uh, you, you know, there are people, again, asked, act like this has never been discussed. It's been constantly discussed. It, unfortunately, people don't always get into it until, uh, you know, it's the last minute and they don't realize how much goes into it here at this board. Uh, particularly another part of it, like I mentioned earlier, is that recycling committee. Um, it went on and on and on and Frankly, what, the, what brought it to an end was the infighting that went on in the committee. It just got way out of control, and that was the end of it. And it didn't really seem to help uh, the recycling um, amounts that were picked up or anything, although I'm not saying that I'm against it. It's a good idea, and obviously we need it again. But all of these things have been done, and uh, it's not always how it looks and many of these people commented on the different legalities of their uh, parts of their condominiums. Um, like a lot of people didn't realize that we're not supposed to send town vehicles onto these condominium projects. That's what the board has always been told. So I don't think people really have the full knowledge of the way it really is. But we're looking forward to try to make some arrangements and to make it better for everyone. Thank you. And do we have a motion for adjournment? Uh, no, actually, Mr. Chairman, okay. if you don't mind, uh, before you would, uh, you would adjourn, uh, I would appreciate if the board would entertain a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small e litigation. So moved. At what time? Second. 948. 948. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.